Welcome everyone. Today is Monday, September 19th, 2022. This is a regular meeting of the City of Asbury Park Planning Board. Chairwoman Krasak, would you like, would you please like to call this meeting to order? Yes, the, the, calling the meeting to order. This meeting is being held in compliance with the Open Public Meetings Act, Chapter 231, Public Law 1975. Adequate notice of this meeting has been provided to the Coaster and Asbury Park Press by publication of the annual meeting notice and posted on the Municipal Bulletin Board and uh, Municipal website. All notices are on file with the Board Secretary. Official action may be taken on the following matters before this Board. Fire exits are located on east and west sides of the council chambers, as well as the back of the building. I will ask any, everyone with a cell phone or another device kindly to silence your device for the duration of the meeting. Just as a reminder, this meeting is being recorded by AT, APTV for your viewing pleasure anytime you like in your living room. Please join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I will now take roll call. Mayor John Moore. Here. Councilwoman Yvonne Clayton. Here. James Bonanno. Here. Jim Henry. Here. Jennifer Souter. Here. Alexis Taylor. Here. Eric Galipo. Here. Daniel Shinameo is absent. Um, Rick Lambert, absent. Barbara Krasak? Here. Present. Thank you, everyone. Okay, I think that the, the first, uh, do we have any modifications, Mr. Karras, or are we moving forward with as planned? We're moving forward as on the agenda. Okay. Uh, uh, the minutes forward? Uh, we don't know. The, um, at this point, the minutes uh, from the last meeting are being reviewed once again, so we will move that to the next meeting. Uh, and the first application that's up is the Tall Brothers Asbury Park Urban Renewal LLC, 407 Lake Avenue. Uh, and at this point, I must state that I have to recuse myself. Uh, so I will be stepping down and Mr. Henry will be taking over the meeting. I will be back for the second half of this meeting. But is that a threat? That, no, that's <laughs> just letting you know. Thank you. Once Mr. Karras is done, before he goes his first week, it's Australian Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Karras. If I may, Andrew Karras of the firm Fox Broadshaw, on behalf of the applicant, Cole Brothers, Asbury Park, Urban, Newell, LLC. They are the designated subsequent redeveloper for property at 407 Lake Ave. This is Board of Juarez, Block 3103, Lot 1. Just want to give a little overview in terms of the application before we get to the actual presentation of the application tonight. As I'm sure a lot of you are aware, 407 Lake Ave is a vacant lot for the most part. It does have a parking lot on there that has 90 parking streets. It is in the waterfront redevelopment area in the prime renewal zone. Comprised of 2.44 acres. It's a relatively large lot that remains vacant within the waterfront area right adjacent to Sam Tam. It is bordered by Cook Michigan Lake and also Heck and Grand Avenue. The proposed project for which we're here tonight is a total of 62 townhouse units. 36 four-story units in three separate buildings that will front on Cookman Avenue. Additionally, we have 26 three-story units in two separate buildings that will front on Lake Avenue. There's a total of 160 parking spaces that are being proposed that satisfies the requirements and the standards for the waterfront redevelopment zone. Now, as required under the waterfront redevelopment plan, you were required first to go to the TRC, the Technical Review Committee, which we had done. Thereafter, we went before the Mayor and Council for compliance or to ensure that there is compliance with the redevelopment plan for which a resolution had been passed reflecting that compliance. Having completed that, being the subsequent the designated subsequent redeveloper for the site from ISTAR, we're here now tonight for the planning board 
for a preliminary and final major site plan approval. With that being said, I have a number of witnesses I will be calling tonight. We'll start out with the engineering review the application, including the engineering plans. I'll also be calling our landscape designer and also my client to provide some additional testimony. Our architect will save for the hearing. This matter certainly is not going to finish tonight. I know there are two matters that are on. Uh, so we'll pretty much take up it. Hopefully we'll finish the three witnesses. I'm not sure we will, but certainly we'll take up the allotted time of an hour and a half. That being said, uh, Doug Dunn, please raise your right hand. You saw me swear that the testimony that you're about to give in this matter will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I do. I do. State your names and your affiliation with the board. Don Miller, board planner. Doug Dunn, board engineer. Uh, before you move on, Mr. Sure. When we speak, please use the mics because this is being uh, recorded. If anybody wants to uh, look at this later on, we need to let them know what we're saying. Thank you. That's it. How can you tell if we're being picked up? Is there some sort of Talking to the mic. <laughs> is there a little light on the uh, base of the... Yes, it's on. It's on. It's yeah, on. You only hit that to mute it, so... Yeah, it's on. Yeah, it's on. Okay. All right, ready? Check. All right. First up, I'm going to call my engineer, Jay Cruz. I'm going to ask him after he gets sworn in to give us the benefit of his qualification. Mr. Cruz, please stand. Raise your right hand. You sound swear. Testimony done for this matter. All truth and nothing but the truth. I do. Please state your name for the record, spelling, uh, and Andy Wood. Name is Jay Cruz. Last name is spelled K R U S E. A professional engineer, licensed in the state of New Jersey with the firm ESE Consultants Incorporated. And you've testified before other boards in the state of New Jersey? Yes, over 100. And you've been qualified as an expert, essentially as an engineer, am I correct? That's correct. I may offer him as an expert. Is your license current? Yes, it is. Okay. And go ahead. That's all good. Mr. Cruz, you're familiar with this project, am I correct? That's correct. And this is sitter. <laughs> nope. And you've had an opportunity to view the site, go to the site, and to prepare plans relative to the proposed design or development of this site, am I correct? That's correct. And you've prepared a site plan with regard to this application, am I correct? Correct. What I want to do is first mark as A1 for identification the site plan that you prepare. We're going to mark that as A1. And what I'd like you to do is give us the latest revision date for the site plan that you prepare for the application. Sure. Latest revision date is dated August 15th, 2022. Perfect. All right, why don't we go through what is existing on the site? Why don't we start there? And then we'll go through the site plan in terms of what, what is being proposed. Okay. Sure. Good evening, everybody. I'll start with referencing sheet two of, I'm sorry, sheet three of 15 from the original site plan submission set that was provided to the board, again, dated August 15th, 2022. Uh, this sheet is an overview of the existing conditions on the site and surrounding the property. Uh, Andy went through and mentioned the, all the specifics of the site itself, acreage, zone. Um, I'll give you a little summary of the on-site and surrounding uh, areas and uses. So if you start with the top of the screen, uh, that is oriented north. Uh, so bounding the property to the north is Cookman Avenue. Um, as you go clockwise around the exhibit in the screen, the, to the east uh, is Heck Street. Uh, Cookman Avenue is a two-way street, while Heck Street is a one-way street running north to south traffic flow-wise. As you come to the bottom of the screen or the exhibit, uh, you uh, touch Lake Avenue, which borders the site to the south. That is a two-way street as well. And then finally, as you uh, go to the final uh, border, which is to the west, you have Grand Avenue, which is a two-way street. Uh, so obviously you can see the site is bounded by four municipal streets. I'm sure you're familiar with the property itself. As Andy mentioned, it's comprised of two main components. Uh, if you look at the exhibit, the, uh, the hatched area is the public parking space uh, that has approximately 90 spaces. There are two access points currently, one onto Lake Avenue and another access point onto Grand. 
avenue. Uh, the remaining area is basically open space, manicured lawn with some landscaping. So relative to the existing conditions of the site, there's one other aspect. As you go across Lake Avenue, obviously, I'm sure you're familiar, there's Wesley Lake, which is immediately south of the property across Lake Avenue. Uh, of note here, Lake Avenue has a 100-year flood hazard area associated with it based off the current FEMA mapping. Um, if you look on the exhibit that I have here presented to you, the uh, base flood elevation from the FEMA mapping is elevation 10. And the dark, the lowest dark line, as you see on the exhibit, is the limit of the flood hazard area on the site. The, the next line up, which is a smaller dashed line, is the New Jersey design flood elevation, which is one foot above that base flood elevation, or elevation 11. So as you can see, the majority of the site is uh, encumbered by the flood hazard area of both the FEMA and New Jersey design. All right. So if I can go to the, uh, the next slide, I'll get into the... The, the next slide, which I'll present, is sheet 415 of the site plan set. Again, the same revision date. This is the overall uh, site plan for the project, showing all uh, surface improvements and above ground improvements. Uh, as Andy mentioned, the site development consists of 62 uh, condominium residential units. Uh, there are... Uh, condominium, they are of a townhouse design. Sorry, right? yes, the townhouse design, yeah, exactly, but um, it's set up in a kind of sort of a condominium orientation. So along the Cookman Avenue frontage, there are three buildings, uh, all four stories that contain 36 units. And the other frontage on Lake Avenue, it contains two buildings and those all are three story units uh, comprising and the overall 62 unit number. So the 36 units on Cookman Avenue and 26 units uh, fronting on Lake yeah, Avenue. That is correct. Yes, the four stories is consistent with the, and the three sto four stories on Cookman and three stories on Lake are consistent with the redevelopment plan. Okay, so as you go through the site plan, you'll you'll notice that there are also um, a bunch of other uh, improvements that are necessary as well. Um, you'll see that there are interior drive aisles, uh, driveways, and the like. Uh, so one thing to note in this area, again, as I mentioned, because of the flood hazard area that traverses the site, uh, the areas of the driveways, the drive aisles, all have to be at the minimum base flood elevation from the FEMA map at elevation 10. Uh, and then all garages have to be at that elevation or above, and then the finished floors of these units have to meet all the additional height requirements that FEMA requires and Jersey building codes require for elevation above the flood hazard area which adds a unique design perspective to this site other than just meeting existing grade, it's gotta be elevated. So looking at the overall layout, you'll notice again the circulation that I mentioned earlier. Uh, the main artery is a two, uh, right now it's a 24 foot wide, uh, two way drive aisle that runs through the center of the site and serves as a, a rear access and a rear entryway to all the driveways. The driveways are 18 feet deep and those 18 feet lead up to your garage door. Uh, the overall driveway and garage orientation provides for access from both streets, from Heck and from Grand Avenue. Uh, the overall site itself provides for three parking spaces, two within the unit for the four-store units on Cookman and one within the driveway. So there's three spaces for those units. So when you say two within the unit, you're talking within the garage. That's correct. Within the garage, interior garage space, there's two, how, there's two uh, parking spaces for automobiles or vehicles. There's one space within the exterior in the driveway, the 18-foot driveway. That's on Cookman and the four-story units. Then for the three-story units that are on Lake Avenue, uh, you have, again, the one driveway parking space, and then you have one interior garage space uh, for a total of two spaces for those units. When you add all those parking spaces together, that's 160 total parking spaces for the project, which is meets or exceeds the redevelopment plan requirements and RSIS standards. What about the plan in terms of the recently passed EV statute? 
Yes. As a part of the overall architectural design for the project, each garage space will have will be wired and set up to make re for make ready EV parking and charging stations. So basically, each unit will have its wiring set up so that any resident can come in. It's make ready for them to add a charging station so that they can uh, charge their electric vehicles choose they choose to purchase. <laughs> All right. So. Also, for the garage spaces, in addition to make ready, there's also interior areas for storage of waste and recycling containers. Uh, and those will be housed interior of those garages. And then if you'll notice also on the site plan itself, between the driveways, there's a, a, a differing hatched area or a small area between each driveway where residents can uh, wheel out or roll out those containers and uh, stage those uh, for normal routine waste or recycling pickup, which would be done by a private hauler. Now on this plan, there are, between the buildings, you have an access point. What are those access points? Sure, so for the major access point on Cookman Avenue, as again, as a result of the flood hazard area encumbering the property, uh, the regulations for the DAP require you to have one access point to be at least at the flood hazard area, flood hazard area elevation, which is elevation 10. The areas in this, uh, the area around this property, uh, basically the only elevation that gets near 10 is as you get closer to Cookman Avenue and Grand Avenue. Uh, as you come down Grand Avenue and also Heck Street as you get towards Lake, obviously the elevations get lower as you get towards Lake Avenue. So those areas would be inundated during the 100-year flood hazard elevation. Flood hazard, they would be inundated under the 100-year flood. So as part of the DEP requirements, we are required to have an emergency access or an access as high as possible, which would be as close in proximity to Cookman Avenue and Grand Avenue without being close to the signalized intersection and causing traffic concerns. So that's one uh, major point from dealing with the flood hazard area requirements of why you see emergency access between the two buildings closest to the Cookman Avenue and Grand Avenue intersection. The other area we also have is a pedestrian access way from internal to the development for residents to uh, walk through the middle of the drive aisle between the two buildings located and fronting on Lake Avenue. And that leads up to what we're calling a, a boardwalk. And this boardwalk would be a normal access way. However, again, due to the flood hazard area requirements, this walkway has to be elevated to be at or above the base flood elevation. So with the elevation differences, this now has become a aesthetic feature. We've turned it into a boardwalk, which will have openings underneath to allow floodwaters to pass through in and exit, and will also serve access to these residential properties on Lake Avenue. And again, this cannot be a grade because the building code in New Jersey requires any building with four or more units that um, is, uh, <laughs> has habitable area on the first floor has to be ADA accessible. So that's why we have to have this boardwalk meet the grade. We can't have steps here. It's gotta be sloped up from Grand Avenue and Heck Street to meet the ADA requirements and become a boardwalk. Now in terms of the access points from Lake Ave to that boardwalk, we have three access points, am I correct? Yes. Originally when we proposed this to the TRC, we had two, am I correct? That's correct. And as a result of a recommendation from the TRC and also the Mayor Council, we added that third access, am I correct? That is correct. Okay. So as you can see from the, the overall site, that we've discussed the orientation, the layout, the driveway, the parking, the access, the pedestrian access. Um, now we can, we'll move into some of the utilities. Uh, We'll move into the utility plan, which there's a lot of line work on here, but I'll just show it just for orientation and discussion. Uh, there are several utilities, obviously, that are required, water, uh, sewer, gas, electric. Um, the water mains exist in Cookman Avenue and in Lake Avenue and are owned and operated by New Jersey American. Uh, initial discussions with the utility company, they indicated that individual services they would prefer for each unit. So you'll see a, a bunch of lines on the utility plan showing individual services to each unit. Um, obviously, as the disturbance of the roadway increases, and as mentioned by our engineer in a letter, we would have to come back and mill and repave areas to make it consistent and have a nice even surface after construction is done. So with the Cookman Avenue and Lake Avenue water mains, we have connections for water service to each of those mains. 
Then there's the sanitary sewer service to each unit. Uh, as contemplated earlier on in development when this project was potentially going to be developed back in the 2007 timeframe, there are two areas that are left stubbed for sanitary sewer service from manholes in Heck Street and in Lake Avenue. We're gonna to propose to continue to use those stubs that were left for the previous plan development, extend those into the property, and that will provide sewer service for the overall project. Past the water and sewer service, there's also obviously gas and electric. Uh, those will be taken from the utilities that surround the property as well. And the plan is to uh, provide the meters for the gas and electric on the interior faces, or what we're calling the alleyways between the buildings, so they're not on the exterior faces surrounding the roadways as much as practical so that they're not visible to folks, pedestrians walking by uh, Routine Street on Heck, Grand Lake, and Cookman. So those that are an overview of the overall utilities. There's another utility that's required uh, is stormwater management. <clears throat> uh, I'll get into stormwater management for a little, oh, sorry, one last, one last utility I also forgot to mention and I almost skipped over it is. Um, obviously there's also AC condenser units for servicing this property and this project. The AC condenser units are proposed to be located on the rooftop, central to the building, so that they're not visible from the street. So they'll be screened uh, from any visibility as well. In terms of the utility connections to the buildings, do we know where the utility companies are going to acquire those utilities? We don't know the specifics yet, but we have a good idea that we can direct those to, again, those interior alleyways so that the gas and electric meters will be on the interior faces uh, at the end units so that they're not exposed or visible from street level for pedestrians walking around. And all efforts would be made then to screen those utility connections, correct? Yes, we screen those further so they're definitely not visible. So the uh, last utility that we mainly deal with on the site civil engineering perspective is stormwater management. Uh, this uh, site is located again within the 100 year flood hazard area. The DEP has determined, determined that the flood hazard area is fluvial. Um, and I don't wanna get a long determination, but there's different requirements if it's a fluvial flood hazard area versus a tidal flood hazard area, which you may have closer to the, the ocean. So we're required now to meet the rate reduction requirements of the new Jer Jersey DEP storm management standards. We're proposing an underground storage system to handle that. That storage system will connect into the existing stormwater management system and collection system in Lake Avenue, which discharges into Wesley Lake. We were required to meet all the rate reduction, re rate reduction requirements of the DEP, and it's been designed to satisfy those criteria. The next criteria is water quality. Uh, stormwater management, we're also re required to provide water quality for any motor vehicle services per the DEP requirements. In this instance, we're proposing all motor vehicle services to be uh, comprised of a pervious pavement system, which provides 80% total suspended solids removal, which is again compliant with the DEP standards for stormwater management. And the last prong, uh, not to bore you, of the stormwater management requirements for the DEP are uh, groundwater recharge. However, in this instance, since we're in a playing area one in a redevelopment zone for a metropolitan area, recharge isn't required, and in this case wouldn't be recommended due to the higher groundwater table encountered on the site. So that's the overview of uh, three components of stormwater management that we're proposing, uh, to how we're proposing to satisfy the three components of stormwater management for the site. Has there been interaction with the DEP in terms of the layout of the site and stormwater? Yes, we've had several pre-application meetings and conferences with the DEP uh, due again to the flood hazard area determination being fluvial. Uh, that requires the site to be elevated. Uh, all parking, uh, parking, driveways, garages, like I mentioned earlier, have to be elevated. There are net fill requirements where we can't have additional fill on site other than what's already on site so that there's an even balance for storage within the floodplain of Wesley Lake. So we had all these discussions initially with the DEP and have approach them with our proposed solutions uh, and had feedback. So that's been incorporated into the design now. And we've actually also already made our submission to the DEP for consistency review with the current CAFR permit for the redevelopment area. Okay. Uh, and last, we'll talk about um, the lighting and landscaping for the project. And I'll go through an overview and we can get into more details with our landscape architect who is here as well. Uh, for the lighting, we're proposing, in general, interior light, light posts that will match the lighting that is required per the redevelopment plan. Uh, it may not be very visible in here, but we're proposing around all of the street frontages to meet the streetscape requirements in the redevelopment plan with benches, 
trash receptacles, lamp posts, decorative pavers, sidewalk widths, and bike racks. And that has been provided by the guidance within a redevelopment plan and the plan that you see before you, which is sheet seven, includes all those uh, landscape amenities. Now, it appears that there's a public space right on Capitol, correct? That is correct. Let's talk about that. Go back to the sheet four and site plan. So, as part of some of the uh, intricacies and difficulties in meeting the, when I say the net fill requirements, where you can't fill within the floodplain for the, the DEP flood hazard area since this is determined flu, fluvial. Good. Uh, the area, the lowest point of the site, happens to be at the Heck and Lake Avenue uh, intersection. So that area is already encumbered by a, a low elevation. We don't want to fill that area because it would take away flood volume from the overall Wesley Lake floodplain. So that's why you'll notice that our units aren't as close to the Heck and Lake Avenue area. So we're not filling with residential structures. And, but we're trying to use that area to be more uh, of an amenity. And you'll see that it's an elevated boardwalk leads into an overall sitting area or an elevated deck where folks in the community come out, sit, relax, convene, congregate, uh, and also complement the overall streetscape amenities that are required for Heck Street, which mirrors the opposite side, which is a law 40 foot wide pedestrian area with decorative pavers, planting islands. Uh, so it all corresponds to the improvements on Heck. Let's talk about that a little bit on Heck Act. So across the street, there's the Wesley Grove that's correct. And that has a wide sidewalk in the sense that it mirrors in terms of wide sidewalk and that space. Am I correct? That's correct. <coughs> if I can. All right. Let's talk a little bit about the width of that driveway, how it's differentiated from the uh, ingress and egress onto the site, and also the type of uh, cement and finish that's going to be provided. Sure, so as part of discussions held with the TRC, uh, the driveways on Heck will cross over a 40 foot area, which is fairly large. Uh, so the area of the driveway will be uh, a concrete construction, but scored to be a, in a different pattern than the overall plaza area. The plaza area, or we're calling the plaza area on Heck Street, will have the planning islands and we'll have regular concrete with eight by eight score patterns in it. And the area where the driveway is demarcated will have a smaller score pattern to be differentiated between access and pedestrian travel. On each side of that area on Heck as well, there'll be bollards so that cars can't travel outside the drive area and onto the pedestrian walkable space just to make sure that there's no conflict from pedestrian movements and vehicle movements. On the opposite side, we don't have as big an issue there because the distance between the property line and the uh, edge of pavement for Grand Avenue is a lot smaller. Again, we're provo proposing to provide the uh, scored concrete in a different pattern than what's left for the sidewalk uh, so that there's a differentiation between vehicle path and pedestrian path. The pattern for on HEC for not the dry aisle, but the other water area, that's going to be an eight by eight concrete just for sure? Yes. Now, the driveway entrances onto and off of the side work, both driveways, I should say, both on HEC and Grand Ave, what is the width of Okay. Currently, the driveway widths are functioning as two-way and are 24 feet wide. So, I will get into directional in a second. In terms of parking, on-street parking that is around the site, is there going to be any reduction of the parking that is on the street? Uh, there will be no reduction in parking. Uh, what is working to our benefit to make sure that we're meeting the existing parking surrounding the project? There are a total of 55 spaces, if you count all the spaces on Cookman, Lake, Heck, and Grand. Uh, there are already existing two access points onto Grand Avenue and Lake Avenue. When we readjust those two access points, that's an area we can restripe and add parking. So at the end of the development, we have 55 spaces to begin with on all surrounding roadways. We'll continue to have 55 on-street parking spaces after the development's completed. So there will be no net loss of any on-street parking, correct? That's correct. <laughs> now, there have, there have been comments both from the TRC and also the Mayor Council with regard to that access onto and off the site 
and whether or not it can be done one way. Am I correct? That's correct. And we've had conversations about it. We've spoken, obviously, with the client about that. And we do have the means by which to address that. Am I correct? That is correct. So what I can do here to address those concerns is I'm going to pull up another exhibit. I guess you want to leave this. Yeah, we're going to make this A2 unless I can find it. Okay. <coughs> so A2 is going to consist of three sheets. I have, I have multiple sheets here. It's, it's dated September 19th, today's date, and it consists of the site layout, the landscape plan, and the landscape writer. All right. Uh, understanding conversations with the, the TRC and the council, there was concern, as Andy had mentioned, about the proposed two-way operation and access onto Heck Street and Grand Avenue. The preference was for one-way access uh, with one-way access coming into the site off of Heck Street, since you're traveling north to south, and then exiting with a two-way, exiting onto Grand Avenue, which is a two-way uh, traveled street. So understanding that that was preference, we went and looked into modifying the access points to accommodate those movements. Uh, so as you look here on what we call Exhibit A2, the, the site plan sheet, we're proposing a 16-foot wide entryway off of Heck Street into the project, which will serve the one way in. Again, making it smaller so there's not propensity for multiple travel points. The bollards on both of that sides will be one feet off, one foot off of that access point to create an 18 foot wide area for if, if emergency vehicles ever had to access the actual internal driveway for the development. If I may, yeah. Since this is stated today and this is being submitted today, the board and staff will need an opportunity to review post today oh, sure. and address it. Sure. Yeah, it, it was one of the comments. Mm -hmm. I'll sign that. Yeah. We want it in the report, so we read, so we figured. That's fine. Don, you want to zoom in on which the uh, heck? Either or? one, so just so we get a sense of okay. how it's functioning. Sure. Is that and by yeah. doing this, this alleviates any concern with headlights glaring onto the adjacent Wesley Road development. That's correct, because all cars will be entering the site from Heck. <clears throat> so as I mentioned earlier, uh, and hopefully this is a little more uh, visible, talking about demarcating a 16-foot wide access instead of 24-foot wide into the, the project, which would be one way in, restriping the area on Heck where the parking was to guide folks into the development from Heck. And then the bollards, as I mentioned earlier, are one foot off of each side of that 16-foot wide area, so you still have an 18-foot wide opening in case you need to have emergency vehicle access through that portion of the project. All right, I just want to identify, you have what looks like a hatched area going to the north and south of the concrete on the sidewalk, am I correct? Uh, yes. Uh, that, but the concrete is not going to be diamond shaped or hatched like that. It's going to be Correct. correct it's just the it's the hatch pattern that was shown it doesn't mean to mirror the exact score pattern that's going to be on the concrete just want to be clear. Mm -hmm. and then as we go through the development we have the 16 foot wide access onto the site and then it widens to how many feet so as you go through the access it widens back out to the 24 foot wide internal drive aisle which provides sufficient room for folks backing out or pulling into their driveway from both sides. And then the egress onto Grand Avenue. Then the egress as we move over onto Grand Avenue. That we're proposing at 18 foot wide to be slightly wider since you have the propensity to have folks exiting both ways as you leave the development. Uh, again, similar to the uh, Heck Street uh, entrance on this exit, we'll have a different scoring pattern for the concrete and uh, have the appropriate signage so you don't have to do not enter uh, into the project on both, on both sides. I just want to bring your attention. There is reflection on there that it's clear to be able to see <clears> the <throat> refuse and recycling container storage, mm -hmm. both within the unit and then for pickup. Can you identify that? Yes, that is uh, in this area as you get closer. We just showed a typical space uh, to demonstrate that there is sufficient space internally to handle the refuse and recycling containers. And then I mentioned earlier about that 
different score pattern or different paver pattern between the driveways for units where that be a staging area to leave those containers when the uh, waste haulers or recycling haulers come to pick up those containers. Excuse me, just to clarify. So it's going to actually be a pavement type, not a striping? Correct. Correct. Yes, yeah, so, uh, for, the, for the drive aisle, we're going to have permeable pavers, decorative pavers. So we'll just have a different pattern and color for those areas between the driveways to make sure that that's clear on where that, what that purpose is for. And that will differentiate <laughs> then that drive aisle from that to the sidewalks and also the drive aisle. Right? Correct. And then the, the last item, and it was a, uh, an item that um, we were made aware of, we're also, as part of this drive aisle, you'll notice here as well, um, the sidewalk width that we originally proposed on Grand Avenue was four feet. So we understand that actually that needs to be eight feet wide. So if you see here, we're, this also has modification for an eight foot wide sidewalk on uh, Grand Avenue. And that would be incorporated into the plans when we uh, potentially submit, resubmit back into the professionals for review. So the entire width to the street is 12 feet, right? Yes, the redevelopment and the requirement is 12 feet, a four foot paver strip for your uh, and for your street trees and the, and the streetscape improvements and eight foot behind that. And that's what we represent on this uh, revised plan. Can you stand back over to the other side really quick? Yeah. I was just looking at the last unit in the upper right. Mm -hmm. When that person is pulling out of their driveway, they only have about 16 feet to mm -hmm. back out. Mm -hmm. Is there a way to make that closer to shifted sound 24 maybe it can be more in the middle um we can make it a little pull the, the curbing down a little quicker uh the one thing we don't have to worry about in that instance is is there's no conflicting backing out on the other side so you only have one person backing out and they're all going to be backing out into you know backing out uh away from the unit and going towards grand avenue so we weren't as concerned about that 24 width because you don't have two folks potentially backing out at the same time. Uh, but we can look into it and work with you on uh, additional dimensions or if you want a couple other feet there to help with that maneuver. To the extent that you can then, you can pull that down a little bit just to give a little bit extra room, am I correct? Sure. The, the purpose of that walkway where your cursor is right now is for what? Um, the, the walkway here, this, yeah. that walkway? That is um, a pad area. These are uh, centralized mailbox collection. So that's access to the centralized mailbox collection uh, for the residents either coming off of heck or internally from the boardwalk area. So is, is the see with the ramp there? Mm -hmm. Is that is there uh, the other one, the, wood, the wooden one? This one. Yeah, that, that one. Yep. Is there, a, is the, there a, a, what's the pitch of it? Is there, is there a pitch? Yeah, there'll be a pitch, but it'll be, it'll be below ADA requirements. So, so I'm curious about how much latitude there is to maybe move if you move your interior. Yeah, if you move the concrete piece to the left, you might be able to pull this down and go up further. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, just something, and and also the mailbox is facing like against the street or the wrong side. It should be on the other side. Okay. I don't want people walking by looking at the back of your mailbox. Sure. And what is the width of the boardwalk? Uh, boardwalk is six feet in width, as you can see on the dimensions along the uh, plan I have presented. And that runs the entire way of the boardwalk, six feet? Yes. Actually, as you get closer to the frontage, it goes from six feet along the frontage. It's actually eight feet to provide more room because you have people in, entering and exiting their units themselves. I think we hit all the um, aspects of the plans. Are there, is there anything else in the plans that we have not covered? Uh, I believe I've touched on everything I wanted to provide in testimony and we're open for questions. Or... All right, the next thing I'm going to be doing is going through the reports. Before I get to those reports, are there any questions that the board has? I do um, have a question. So, looking, can we zoom into the site entry on Grand? Okay. The uh, one way? Yeah. Okay. Um, these painted areas, mm -hmm. it, it feels like a missed opportunity to kind of 
extend some of your stormwater infrastructure into the street, like cutting it out and curbing it, and like low plantings or a small bioswale might be a more attractive thing facing the park, okay. just and kind of marking where the entrance is a little bit more. Okay. Um, so I and the same thing on the other side. I don't know if it works quite the same way because you have that one-way entrance, but maybe the one on the other side here where you've got that odd shape, yeah, that one might be apt to transitioning to some impervious surface and also providing some, you know, people are going to be walking this way, and so you really want to slow the cars down as much as possible as they're coming in and out of the site. They have to be really careful. High pedestrian volumes mm -hmm. only increasing. And so anything we can do to sort of get some pedestrian benefit and get some stormwater benefit out of it would be greatly appreciated. Okay. In your testimony, you indicated, at least what I thought I heard, was that uh, you're going to have some retention off-site in the stormwater? Uh, no, it's all going to be on-site. It'll be underground beneath the driveway and, and dry aisle area. Okay. I, th I thought you said off-site at one point. I uh, may have meant when our ultimate tie-in point will be the uh, connection into the existing stormwater system on Lake Avenue, which is off-site. Okay. And you have room for uh, the storage on-site? Everything is okay? Mm -hmm. yeah, yes. And, um, oops, sorry. Yeah. Um, can you just provide some clarity as to why you selected Grand and um, Emory as the entrances and not Lake. I just want to get it on the record. Sure. Uh, it goes back into the, um, the issue with or the flood hazard area encompassing the, the majority of the property. Lake Avenue, everything in this region is basically, it's higher on Cookman Avenue and everything slopes grade-wise from Cookman Avenue down towards Lake. And really it goes from the Cookman and Grand intersection towards the lake and heck intersection everything slopes that way and you have a not significant fall off but you go from elevation roughly 11 up at the corner of grand and um, cookman down to elevation seven and a half near the intersection of heck and uh, lake avenue the elevation for the flood hazard area is elevation 10. so <clears throat> most of the roads on the side uh, well lake avenue is well below the flood hazard elevation that's elevation seven, six and a half, seven. So access onto that roadway is not favored by the DEP because that would be inundated during the 100 year flood hazard elevation. Flood, pardon me. The 100 year flood hazard would inundate that roadway. Obviously, you're seven and a half <coughs> up to 10, you're talking two and a half feet, which is difficult to traverse. As you move up, obviously, as you go through from Lake up to Cookman, the elevation rises. You get more elevation, you're not as deep during the 100 year flood hazard elevation of 10. You get a little bit better, so you're not traversing a significant amount as you would if you were entering and exiting off of Lake, which is why we chose those two access points. And even with that, we still, to comply with the DP regulations, have to have that emergency access closest to the Grand Avenue and Cookman Avenue intersection to be at the base flood elevation. So, is the elevations of the site that dictated where you're going to gain? Or where you're going to have ingress and egress onto the side, my friend. That's correct. Um, In simple terms. And was there any prohibition placed by any regulatory agency on using Lake Avenue? Like, did you explore it? Well, I know you received comment at the TRC about exploring an entrance on and off Lake Avenue. And the testimony at that time was that, well, I don't want to testify. Uh, Will you? Yep. Record the DEP disfavor. Yes, and I've mentioned those. We had those initial I'm pre-application I'm just trying to get it all on the record. Sure, that's no, that's, that's fine. Yes. I, I mentioned earlier those pre-application meetings that we had with the DEP, they they discouraged us from an, at an entrance, an exit, or any access onto Lake Avenue. All right. Thank you. So you have five buildings. Are you going to build all five at the same time, or are they going to be different? I... Well, well, I'll provide tests right in terms of the staging yeah. of the development on the site. Okay, and then during that, you'll ask 
tell us if you have need more space to stage or if you have enough. And then I believe you said there was two stub sewer hookups from 2007. Has anybody televised them lately? I mean, in the last 15 years to see if they're still usable? I mean, are we spinning our wheels and they're not gonna be usable? Well, what we're planning on doing is just putting new, new sanitary, sanitary connections at those locations, not reusing the stubs. We know that they're there. We're proposing, we're proposing just a brand new connection in the same places that the stubs were left. So it'll be a whole brand new connection. Okay, and before that's done, the city engineer will be involved. Okay. Yeah, we, we, uh, have, we have to actually apply for a treatment works approval. Right. So okay. we'll have to go through the, the sewer department and to get them to review the plans mm -hmm. and sign off before we can submit to the DEP for that approval. CWA application. Right. Okay, thank you. And um, are you the right person to testify about public ac access to boardwalks and stairs and where gates might be? Um, we can discuss those items based off of the site plan, sure. Um, so would you mind just showing us where the public areas of the site are and differentiating them from private access areas? So everything, well, let's start with, let's start with Cookman, just so we have an idea of access. Catch up. Whoa. Sorry. Oh, there's another opportunity for a little. <laughs> so... Up, basically showing you the Cookman frontage, uh, which will basically then all the units on Cookman Avenue have access doors from the units several steps down to meet the widened sidewalk for Cookman Avenue. So that between the frontage is only a couple feet. So you have the streetscape improvements, which extends the sidewalk all the way basically to the right of way line. You have a couple feet, and then you are at the building face, and you have a couple steps there. So there's no real intermixing there of public and private. So then as you will go clockwise, as you venture down, heck, we talked about the, the what. I'm sorry, do you mind reviewing like, what's the condition at these gaps in the building? So the first gap in the building as you reference here, mm -hmm. is that emergency access I referenced closest to Cookman and Grand Avenue that's required for the DP regulations. So that's going to be a permeable paver area that's going to be mirror grass, but that will be where the emergency access is going to be provided with a depressed curb and an open area, obviously, so you can get a vehicle in and out during a flooding condition. Will there be any gates or indicators, lights, bollards, anything separating? I'm just... Well, it can't be bollards because it's emergency. But no, I'm not, I'm, yeah. anything in that area that would like stop residents from using it, right? Yeah, I'm, I don't want to use that term. That would prevent a resident from... No, we don't have any gates. It's not gated off. It's not bollard off. It's open. It feels Again, open. It, yes, it okay. is open, and it's meant to be uh, grassed after the, the seed germinates on this, this um, emergency access. So the next <coughs> opening between the buildings as you go further towards the Cookman Avenue and Heck Street area. Again, that's open area. You'll see two little extensions on the buildings on the end. Those are the utility rooms for the fire service to house the fire sprinkler equipment and valving. Uh, that other area that's not a building is going to be grassed and lawn as well, open area. So can we just go back? Yeah. Um, I, we had made the recommendation that there would be a pedestrian access through this way that would have a visual at least connection to scroll down a little that other pedestrian mm -hmm. access that cuts through the buildings and I was under the impression that you guys were going to do that uh, there was discussion internally and then the applicant was concerned of having public traversing between buildings into the internal area that is meant for the private residence community and then having access internal to drive aisles or vehicles apart and then walking down to that access that leads from the internal driveway down to Lake Avenue. As so, opposed to putting in the gate, mm -hmm. um, the grass area would in a sense dissuade people 
public from accessing it from the back. So that's the rationale for that area, not providing a designated area or sidewalk. And keeping in mind that the development is private development. So the back of the buildings, the drive aisle, the garages, and all that's private space. So it's not meant to be an invitation for the public to come back and gain access to that area. Okay. Moving on again, the openings between the buildings closest to. Cookman and Heck. We have the building extensions on the end for the uh, fire service and, and sprinkler um, um, valving. Uh, that area is also lawn as well, similar to the other opening. What are the, the two uh, those concrete pads? Yeah, they're concrete pads at the base of the doors okay. opening so that if you have to come service the utility or the valving, at least there's a stable place to stand on, but it's not meant to be a, a sidewalk area. Okay. <clears throat> so uh, we'll talk about landscape plans later on right? mm -hmm. when you say grass it's just grass oh uh, well we have a landscape there, there's okay. a landscape okay. Okay. Uh, then as you get closest again at the grand i mean at the um cookman and heck intersection we talked about the 40 foot wide area that's going to become a mirror of the opposite side of heck with the, the concrete uh the pavement plantings uh, and the panning boxes. There's also um, side entrances along the frontages of the, well, the sides of the building, that front on heck, there's Dorian access ways and sidewalk areas that lead from those access ways out to the public pedestrian pathway at the front on uh, Cookman and then to the rear here at the driveway for the end unit. As you further extend down Heck Street, we talked about the entranceway uh, the one way in and as you come further down there's an access from the pedestrian public pedestrian space internal to the, the boardwalk and then the central mailbox location again obviously we heard the comments about potentially different location and different orientation for that, that structure but that's the thought process behind the the access in the development is there any gate that's going to be placed at the beginning of that boardwalk area, is that going to be an open boardwalk? Uh, at this juncture, it was, was open, but again, depending on the privacy, the propensity to have a gate there so that folks don't, from the public, don't enter into it and think of it as a public amenity, we'll probably end up having a gate across the front to only be accessed by the residents of the community. And what about the other access points <laughs> off, of, off of Lake Ave? Same thing. Correct. Okay. Yep. So as we come further down, going south, and near the intersection of, of Heck and Lake, we'll slide over. You can see there's the multiple access points to the boardwalk that fronts along the three-story units, that front Lake Avenue. Uh, and those obviously are uh, going to be stepped up because it's elevated and with railing. And again, those are access points that will lead into the community. Again, talking about gating them so that the propensity for the public to use those and think of them as an amenity for themselves is discouraged. And there's three of those access points uh, proposed along Lake Avenue, one at the end of each of the buildings and one central to the open area between the two buildings Lake Avenue, which again has a pedestrian pathway for residents to lead internally to the center of the drive aisle and the project. And as we continue over to Grand Avenue, there's also another access point, am I correct? Yes. On Grand Avenue to Portland. Yes, as you come around past the three access points on the lake, you'll circle back going north on Grand. Uh, the area nearest the exit on the Grand, there'll be an access point to enter the boardwalk area. Again, it's elevated and to meet ADA compliance, uh, the orientation that we have here it is pretty much set based off elevation differences to meet the ADA requirements for slope and pitch. So that access will lead up to the boardwalk and continuous across the frontage of those two buildings and lead all the way over to that seating area that I mentioned near the Heck and Lake Avenue intersection. 
again, as you walk, uh, walk around and you go north on Grand Avenue, there are the sides of the buildings have doorways to mirror frontages, and there's access sidewalk from those to the boardwalk area, the landing for the boardwalk area, and the rear drive areas of those end units. Uh, similar as you get near the intersection for the unit at the intersection of Cookman and Grand Avenue. Exit sidewalk for the president for the residents use to get to the back of the driveway and out to the public space to public sidewalk on Cookman. Any other questions? Thank you. Yeah, I've got a couple more. Let's go back to the stormwater for a second. Uh, in the past, we have had problems with um, connections at the uh, stormwater and where it runs into Wesley Lake. Uh, it, how is your system going to affect the, up, the flow coming from upstream uh, with the stormwater? Uh, it was, we had a big discussion here a couple years back about how the stormwater from upstream would not affect the flow into the lake because it would be deferred. How does your system uh, work in comparison, or is it compatible with the system that exists, or are we going to have a, uh, a surcharge on top of your uh, holding system, mm -hmm. and how is that all going to work? Sure. So let me flip to... get to the utility plan, which will be a little difficult with everything going on it, but we'll, we'll zoom in a little bit. So to start with your question just on design criteria, the requirements from DP establishes for quantity of runoff coming from the site is we have to meet reductions from what flows off the site currently. So there's a certain amount of flow that comes off the site for the different storm events. You know, you hear the 100-year storm event, which is the flood hazard design flow. So for that storm event, we're required to reduce the amount of runoff coming from the site to 80% of what it was during the current condition. So we have to be below that. For the 10-year storm, we've got to be at 75% of that rate. And then for the two-year storm, which is the more frequent storm that happens more, more often, less volume, we have to be at 50%. So our storm system is instantly designed to comply with the DP requirements to reduce the rates of stormwater coming off the site from what's happening now in its current condition. And your engineer can testify and review if he wants that, and the DP will review it as well, that we can we comply with those requirements and our design is set up that way. That's why I have the underground storage system. That basically holds back the volume of stormwater that comes from the site development, lets it out at a slower rate which is less than what comes off the site now. So we're meeting the rate reduction, and that's how we make sure that there's no impact to the stormwater system. Now, with regards to the upstream system, for this area here of the, of the city, um, the inlets that are on Lake Avenue immediately fronting the property don't collect any stormwater runoff from piping systems further up north as you run up into the city. They're pretty much isolated to just this portion of Lake Avenue and this site. So there's no other areas contributing to the stormwater system and the piping within Lake on the frontage other than the site and some of the road area. And we did an analysis that's in the storm report to demonstrate that during the 100 year storm, our flow rate in combination with what's going to these inlets now from Lake, uh, the Lake Avenue surfaces, aren't, isn't more than the pipes can handle and the capacity that's going there now. So we looked at that as well. And are you saying that the upstream uh, system does not affect your storage? Upstream of Cookman. Up, up, upstream of Cookman, yes. Yeah, no, that doesn't, there, that system doesn't tie into anything that we're connecting to. So there's, no, there's going to be no surcharge from upstream that's going to affect the flow into Wesley Lake? Not through, not through our stormwater management system. I'm no. sorry? Not through our stormwater management system. And we're also, as part of our requirement for the DEP, we have to start our analysis based off of an elevation in Wesley Lake that's above its current static level. So we're even starting our, our analysis for storage and rate reduction at an elevation that's a couple feet higher 
it's basically equivalent to the 10 year storm elevation within that lake when the storm starts. So we're compounding our analysis to make it more conservative by saying there's already gonna be stormwater in Wesley Lake several feet higher than it currently is, which is gonna allow, it's gonna impact our stormwater management. We factor that into our design. Okay. Uh, going through the boardwalk <coughs> on the eastern end of your project, uh, the boardwalk there is elevated, correct? When you, which side? On the eastern side, Heck Avenue. Yeah. Yes. Okay. How high is that above the ground? That's about four and a half feet. Okay. Between the boardwalk and the ground, is there any kind of a um, fencing system or a lattice system or? Uh, yeah, we'll get into that with your architectural testimony and also the landscape But I, I can give you a quick synopsis. Yeah, yeah it, 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 it's not open as visible. We're gonna put like a shiplap covering on it and they'll have gaps in between it of like an inch and then basically six inches below the bottom shiplap and grade because we still have to allow flood water to go circulate through and ec enter underneath the boardwalk and exit back out. It's just requirements from the DEP. So it'll be covered so it won't be open. You'll have the shiplap, small openings between it so that you're not just looking at you know, an elevated boardwalk with posts and openings underneath. It'll be decorative as well. And that's typical except for the height all along the boardwalk? Yeah, that'd be typical along the frontage of the entire okay. boardwalk. And on the west side, along the uh, <clears throat> the western facade of the building, it appears that there is a strip between the boardwalk and the building. Yeah, and that is going to be an area where it's going to be landscaped. Okay. So, and we'll get into that. I didn't pull up the landscaping okay. plans, but there'll be landscaping for that area. I uh, said it. I'm sorry. Mr. Clown, are you uh, comfortable with the uh, stormwater uh, system? and? Uh, how it will affect the upstream uh, issues that we've, we've gone through before. I am, yeah, we, in terms of meeting the requirements for quantity, quality, and recharge, uh, everything appears to be satisfied. We did okay. ask for a few clarifications uh, in our report, um, and not to be a, a pessimist, but in, like, let's say in, uh, Sort of a doomsday scenario where everything is inundated, where would stormwater go? You know, if, if everything was backed up in the inlets that you're discharging to, is there a way to protect against? Can you still maintain that storage volume on site somehow? And the point I'm getting at is, would you consider um, adding like a tide flex type of thing to that structure to, to maintain that storage volume for your own site? Uh, I don't see if there, I don't think there'd be an issue with adding the tie flex structures. If, if that's a concern with backwater back up into the system, uh, we could look into that and work with you on what needs to happen. I just had one additional stormwater question. Um, was there any consideration given, I know you have the pervious, you have grass pave and you have permeable pavers. Um, was there any consideration given to other green infrastructure to reduce the size of the capacity for the underground storage? a green roof or some, some other type of on-site management instead of having to have such a huge storage capacity underground? Uh, the difficulty is uh, most of those other types of green infrastructure to, to reduce the volume deal with recharge and do the seasonal high water table here and underlying previous development. Uh, this isn't a site that's appropriate recharge, so any other additional green infrastructure we do isn't going to reduce the volume or runoff from these areas. The only other item might be a green roof, but again, in this area and for the design for the units, uh, the rooftop is an amenity that is part of the overall development plan for this project, and it's consistent with the other development in Asbury where folks want to use a rooftop. So that would be the only other kind of green infrastructure, a green rooftop to hold some of the, the stormwater back, mm -hmm. but in this area, it just isn't appropriate with the wasn't appropriate for the design and what the functionality is for the units. Okay, so that's what I was just thinking of the, um, the green, really green roof system in, in terms of just reducing, again, the need, because we know that there is flood zone and we have already have, it's just a lot of water to keep on one underground system. Um, and then the paver, the permeable pavers, then that water, once it goes through, ends up in the underwater, first it goes to the underwater storage or does it go straight out? 
the, it enters the underground storage system and then it's held and retained and like released at a slower rate so that you're not overburdening the system, downstream system. Okay, and same with the grass paper. Uh, the, well, the grass paver is basically is going to be grass. It's more that's more for structural requirements for the support of the emergency vehicles or any vehicles that come in. That would function just as grass. It'd be just as lawn surface. Yeah. Thank you. Just one further question on the stormwater uh, system. Uh, what are your holding tanks? Are they going to be concrete or are going to be? Uh, yeah, the, un the underground storage system is going to be made up of concrete chambers with six inch walls and six inch surface, six inch top, and rated to for the heaviest vehicle that would traverse the site. Tra they're transportation. They're going to be weighted so they. Well, so they'll, they'll, they'll be rated so that they can. Oh, rated. rated. Yeah, sorry. They could be. Ra they'll be rated for the hi the highest traffic loading that's okay. going to traverse the site. You clean them out occasionally. You have a maintenance plan for them. Yeah. As part of the requirement for the DEP, we have to prepare a stormwater operation and maintenance manual for the site to specific direction and also provide reports to the city as part of the MS4 permitting that it's being done on a routine basis. Will that be transferred to the condo association? Yes. Yep. It goes, it actually gets attached to the deed of the property and okay. then goes to the condo association. Uh, why did we go with the wide sidewalk on the extra? I know it's the near the other side. It's compliant and it's it's waterfront redevelopment plan. That's what dictates, yeah. It's yeah. also in the right of way. The, you were talking about the, what, the open space on Heck Street? No, no, uh, the, the right sidewalk on, on Heck here it seems like very large. It's, it's where I thought it was a good opportunity to do a little, uh, you know, more grass space for Water, right? It's one of the requirements of the waterfront development plan. But you'll see as we go through the landscape plan, there are certain plan things that we can add to. Okay. A couple of quick things. Um, the sanitary sewer that we talked about before, mm -hmm. um, the city will own that? And will there be an easement? No, I, I anticipate everything to be owned by the operation, the uh, homeowner association. Because it's, it's basically, we call it a sewer main, but it's one big lateral to serve the building. So once it gets on site, it's just like a private lateral that you would have for a, a regular home or multiple multifamily building. Okay. Um, and then just the sidewalk on Heck Street, in the center of the site, there's, there's kind of like a dip in the grade where coming from the drive aisle, <coughs> you're going seems like you're going down and then you go back up to get onto the boardwalk. Was there a, was that flood related? Was there, was there something, method of reasoning to, to, to why you created it that way? Uh, you hit the nail kind of on the head is all the grading that you see in the open areas along between lake and the building and the between the buildings on lake is all related to flood hazard area requirements and storage so that we're maintaining the same volume that exists on the site now once we develop it. So you'll see depressions that will hold flood water during the 100 year storm event and then slowly release it. So we're maintaining that volume. That's why it wouldn't be our preference. Obviously, it wouldn't be our preference to do that type of grading at all. But it, again, it's this nature of the flood hazard area being fluvial where you can't fill within the fluvial flood hazard area. I think in your prior. Oh, no, no, no. Go ahead. Please. Uh, I thought you. I think you said in your prior testimony that there were two locations tie in for a sanitary sewer. Yes. Where, uh, where are they? Okay. So I'm going to flip to the utility plan and I'll zoom in over towards the Heck Street frontage. Bear with me, my computer's slow. So many things open. So near the intersection of Heck and Grant, I mean, sorry, Heck and Cookman, yeah. uh, there is an existing stub that I referenced earlier that was set okay. for the previous development. We're okay. proposing to connect into that same manhole. Okay. Uh, we'll have to 
as, uh, as you know, the mayor said, we'll have to remove that uh, and put a new lateral in, but at least we're connecting it into the same location that was anticipated when the prior development was planned for this, this lot. So that's the first. And then as we go south on Heck Street towards Lake, uh, and then make a right onto Lake. There's a manhole near the intersection of Lake Avenue and Heck Street uh, to the west. This dashed line here is also a sanitary stub that was left to service what was planned previously. We're going to use that same location. We won't use that stub because uh, it's not in the right orientation for our main, but we'll use that same manhole that was contemplated for the previous development. And then you're going to run laterals. Uh, you're going to run house connections out to a line uh, parallel to each of and south of each of the building facades. Yeah, what we'll have is uh, we'll have a main that runs in front of right. the building facades, and then laterals connected to each that that main. Okay. And the big one on the uh, south side of the north north building, and one on the south side of the south buildings. Yes. And I assume that uh, they're going to be watertight manholes? Yes, they're going to have to be due to the 100 year flood hazard area issues. I had one more and I forgot what it is. <laughs> I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> so, the, um, that pedestrian connection to the boardwalk mm -hmm. right? in that, yep. that dip area. Yeah. So, is, is there a way to? To take the steps out of it, can it be a ramp? Would you speak up, Donna? Oh, sorry. So um, the pedestrian uh, access way between the buildings, connecting the parking area to the boardwalk. You know, we talked about the why the grading needed to be the way it is. It's asking if there's a way to design that so it doesn't need steps. If there's a way to make it a ramp. You know, again, just for ease of. Uh, you know, general mobility, people with strollers, bikes, and whatnot. Because it's, what it, is it three feet? What's the Doesn't changing grade? Yeah, yeah. You're, you're probably. Four feet? You're about here, you're about elevation nine or ten, a couple of feet. We could probably make it work. You're just going to have a lot of, um, one, another reason why we were trying to minimize that is just, that's, a, that's our main storm connections for the underground storm system with posts for ramps and railings. So we're trying to avoid over that. Um, but we can look into it. Yeah, see. I actually think that's quite an important comment. Thank you, Donna. At least there. I mean, I wanted more. Yeah, but we all I think that more. one's key. <laughs> okay. Especially for internal circulation. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm oh, sorry, did I, I zoomed out, just misclicked. Did anybody want to see anything else zoomed in? Anyone else? All right, what I'd like to do then is start going through the reports. The first report that I have is the insight report that stated September 15th, 2022. And I'm assuming we're to do the insight report dated September 15, 2022. Or be one. Mary, make that be one, please. You have the opportunity to review this report, am I correct? Yes. Mark is be one for identification. The insight report that stated September 15, 2022. Am I correct? That's correct. What I want to do is just go through a number of these items uh, on the report. We can start on page two. The first comment has to do a uh, survey asking for what no was provided. Is that correct? That's correct. And I think we had provided maybe one copy with the original application and kind of didn't make it to it. We're proud of different copies too. Yeah. Yep. Um, Number two on page two, the maps on page two of 15 shall include both the written graphics. You have no issue with that, am I correct? No issue. Three, similarly, with dimensions for the existing sidewalk along the front, frontages have not been provided. No issue with that? No issues. 
the event there are any essential to provide that information. My card number four. Correct. Uh, five, mechanical elements uh, label with screening method, if any. We've already indicated that the mechanicals that are going to be on the roof will not be visible from the street where they're going to be located. Am I correct? Correct. So they are screened. Am I correct? That's correct. Phasing of the project, I'll provide additional testimony on that. Similarly, with regard to site maintenance, number seven, I'll have the witness testify. Colorized rendering shall be presented at the hearing. I'll have the architect provide that information. Continuing down, again, number nine talks about steering mechanical equipment. We've already addressed that. Development review. Um, signage, I'll have the architect go over. Architectural elements, number 11. Also, the architect. Utility connections, number 12. We've testified to that, am I correct? Correct. 13, lighting. Asking for a addition note on the plan with regard to cabling, supplying electricity for exterior lighting. And then the grant would be uh, shall be installed underground. No issue with that? No issue. Color temperature be clarified. We'll take care of that. And, uh, be on page four, am I correct? Yep. Lighting heights, we'll address that afterwards with the uh, landscape architect. Elevated boardwalk will address the landscape architect also, as well as E, uh, F, and G. Mm -hmm. 14. Says concrete curb and sidewalk details shall be revised on the date of so that the there is joint, no issue with anything in 14, am I correct? No issues. No issue with number 15, getting the certification that's required in the Freehold Soil Conservation District, am I correct? Correct. In terms of 16, whether or not the development is going to have any impact on noise, air, and water quality, it is a multifamily residential. There's no commercial on this side, am I correct? Correct. There's no uh, industrial on this side. Correct? Correct. The normal residential noise that you get generated from other multifamily projects, correct? Correct. 17, uh, the student stormwater management, the first comment, the site is located in the metropolitan area of the state, <coughs> therefore <coughs> not required to provide groundwater uh, recharge. Am I correct? Correct. B, calculations for the water quality design shall be added to the report. No issue with anything in B. Am I correct? No issues. C, water surface elevations um, shall be indicated within the detail for the detention basin, the service system, how it is shown, no issue with that, am I correct? No issues. Similarly with D, no issue with providing that information, correct? No issue. And you've gone through the maintenance that's required to be filed with regard to this, am I correct? Correct, and we'll provide a separate operation maintenance manual for review. As far as the recycling materials, that's going to be in the areas within the garage, the the garbage and the recycling, am I correct? Correct. And your understanding will provide additional testimony on this that the refuse, it'll be a private hauler that's going to take care of the refuse on site, am I correct? That's correct. And that can be adjusted depending upon the need for the development, am I correct? That's correct. Site distances to be added to the egress drive line, heck, you right, no issue with that, am I correct? Correct. Parking requirements that are compliant, correct? Correct. Considerations. 21, uh, entry sample built that with the architect, the CAFR permit, uh, why don't we address that? Yeah, as I mentioned earlier, uh, we have made the submission to the DEP for our consistency review for the CAFR permit for the waterfront redevelopment area, and we're waiting our initial comments. 23, testimony must be provided regarding compliance with the requirements for the acceptable level of development intensity with regard to the waterfront redevelopment plan. As indicated before, we had gone before the TRC, we had also gone before the Mayor and Council. Uh, the Mayor and Council serves as the redevelopment agency here in Asbury Park to ensure compliance with the waterfront development plan. We first have to get that resolution, which we obtained before we can come to the uh, planning board for site plan. So we are in compliance with the waterfront redevelopment plan. Uh, 24. Utility crossings should be detailed on the plan to ensure safe, adequate, compliant coverage. No issue with that. No issues. PW lighting with the living address, am I correct? Correct. On street parking, we're not uh, taking away any parking space from the street. It's going to have a net loss of zero, am I correct? Correct. 
27, the streetscape will have a landscape architect by testimony. 28 has to do with the two way access, which we have no issue with revising from one way going from Heck over to Heck. Am I correct? Correct. And again, that eliminates any concern with regard to headlights going on to the adjacent development that wasn't broken. Am I correct? Correct. Um, 29, proposed ADA curb locations to be identified as plant adequate spot elevations. No issue with that? No issue. Emergency vehicles number 30, we've addressed, correct? Correct. 31, owner cert, no issue with that, correct? No issues. 32, no issue, correct? Correct. Same with regard to 33 and 34, correct? That's correct. No further testing with regard to the report from Insight. Any questions from the board or from the board engineer with regard to the report? No more for me. Other, other things. I just have one um, kind of, I know you already said this, but the number 20, the UV McGrady spaces, I know you testified to that, but it will be on the revised plan. Yeah, well, we can add a note saying that all garage, all units will have make ready EV wiring and a garage unit. We'll add a note plus as far as the condition and any approved resolution that could also be included. Thank you. All right, item number 20. I have another report that was prepared by Clark which I'd like to have marked as B2, stated September 15, 2020. So far, I've had an opportunity to review what we've now marked as B2 for identification, the report from Clark came in hence, dated September 15, 2020, am I correct? Correct. I just want to go through some of the comments. Most of these are architectural and landscaping. But there are some that pertain uh, to you. If we can go to page four of four. Okay. Um, there are a few comments with regard to what was presented before the TRC. Boardwalk needs more points of access. Hey, that was done, am I correct? That's correct. So I'll see again the one-way driveway access that was accomplished, am I correct? Correct. As also, the walkway should be wide to a minimum, minimum of four feet. G, that was taken care of, am I correct? Yes. Okay. H, street lighting needs to be upgraded. It says the location and type of lighting in the plan. It means a change from the lighting plan submitted to the TRC. Correct. And we'll, we have, there's a lot of <laughs> illumination and lighting comments that we'll have to work with the professionals to make sure that we're compliant. Um, curb extensions, um, they're not necessary or needed for this particular site, am I correct? That's correct. Although... Uh, do you want to address that a little bit more? Yeah, the, the curb extensions that we initially heard discussed at the Microphone TRC... The, the curb extensions that we initially discussed at the TRC were re relegated to um, uh, pedestrian crossing lengths and distances um, since we have uh, not real extensive lengths at the intersections. Uh, we didn't include those as part of the overall streetscape amenity plan. And that was our rationale. If we continue on to page 4, 14 of this report, 2.2, it makes reference to the council resolution that determined that we are compliant with the development plan. It has a few conditions in it. A, um, again, the one way, and we took care of that and we agreed to do that. Am I correct? That's correct. So we're, we're in compliance with the council resolution, correct? Correct. Additional access way was added B, so we are in compliance with that, am I correct? Correct. And sidewalk ahead widened to match the sidewalk on the opposite side of the street, which was done, am I correct? Correct. Okay. We can continue on most of this. I think page 10. Although I would, okay. yeah. Page 10, we have site design again, um, which deals with the driveways and the access onto Peck and Grant. Again, that's been revised to the one way from the two way, and as a result, we reduced the driveway highway. Am I correct? Correct. 5.2 boardwalk. We'll get to that. Uh, Matt Cumberland with the landscape architect. We've taken care of 5.2 and 5.4, am I correct? 5.3 yeah. and 5.4. Uh, 
Thank you. Yep. Five point five is the uh, you know, investigating some more ramps as opposed to steps on all of your carries and, and I think everything else is going to fall on the landscape architect and the architect. Um, the only thing. Uh, you know, back at the beginning, um, where the TRC made the recommendation for the, uh, the curb extensions, you know, Mr. Gallipo also said, you know, he was interested in seeing curb extensions at the at the egress that's proposed now on Grand, the ingress where the the driveways are narrowed to give that better visibility. I mean, these are these are opportunities to to help with stormwater, uh, improve visibility, and, and make those. Um, you know, distinctions between the pedestrian and the, and the vehicle uh, realms. So you're talking about at the two points? Uh, yeah, like those two, and then at the other end, and then I don't know that um, at the, you know, at the uh, southern end where Grand and Lake and <coughs> Heck and Lake, Yeah. I don't know that those are well as vital or if they're, I mean, they are, they are kind of. I mean, they, especially, can you? No. Can you scroll down? Yeah. I mean, the, uh, can you keep going? Because yeah, what you're not showing there is yeah. the the Oop. entrance to the, mm -hmm. right. the pedal to the bridge, the... right? Go this way. So, like anything to shorten the crossing distance there, because it is it's wide. It's, it's wide, wide, and right. people just plow right down Lake Avenue. They do. My dogs and I have played that game. Yeah, I run across the bridge routinely. <laughs> We'll revisit. Okay. Yeah. And, and, you know, it's just, we made recommendations at the TRC that there were significant differences in the orientation of buildings to engage open space, and those have not carried through. So whatever we can do on the streetscape side to better connect this development to the waterfront across the street on Lake Avenue, and to reinforce the east west, I'm uh, sorry, north south, north south, you know, kind of connections that um, Heck and Grand make are really important because we aren't getting that pass through through the site, which is fine. I understand why you don't want people traipsing through your site. Makes sense, um, but you know, we do have significant open space on Grand Avenue that should feel like it relates to the development on the other side of the street and the open space of the lake. All of that has to feel like, you know, the, the, the waterfront redevelopment plan calls this Wesley Lake Village. <laughs> I'm not sure we're there yet. <laughs> All right, we'll, we'll take a look with regard to that. The extensions. Any other questions? We have a lot of questions from the public. Hmm? We haven't got there yet. How about our professionals? We all set. We all. Any other questions you want to ask, Don? Nothing more from me. Okay. Uh, how about a motion to open the uh, uh, public, uh, questions from the public to this uh, particular? Uh, hold on. To this particular witness, and remember, where your questions are to be uh, on the testimony that he has given. Right. Motion to open to the uh, questions for so moved. Second. Second. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. Members of the public, if you have questions of the witness, please step up to the mic and identify yourself. Your address. Hi, I'm Barbara Krizak, 309 Lake Avenue. I uh, just have a couple of questions for you. Uh, having to do with the water, what you were, let me just make sure that I got this right, is that currently that lot is mostly pervious space. It's like probably 50-50, maybe <coughs> more pervious than non-pervious because of the grass. You have the mix of the parking and the lawn. It's probably about 50-50. Okay, so now, uh, from what I believe that your testimony was, was that 
going forward that it will be 85, there will be 85% less water. The, Is the, that my right? Did no, I understand that no, right? The, the, the rate reductions that are required per the DEP are based off of storm events. Mm -hmm. We always hear about the 100 year storm event, which is the design flood for the entire state, the entire country. But there are other storm events too. There's a two year storm event, which is more frequent, drops less rainfall, but happens more frequently. Mm -hmm. And there's a 10 year storm event that happens in between those two. More rain, not as much as the 100, not as little as the two. And those are the three storm events that we have to design towards. So for the 2, 10, and 100, there are rate reduction requirements. And it's all based off of the discharge rate from your site. So for the two-year storm event, we've got to reduce the rate coming off of the site to half, 50% of what was coming off current. Right, and you're doing that even though most of it is pervious, like let's say, and yes. you're still able to do that. Yes, and that's what the underground storage system has That's what's going to store it. Because you basically that additional volume you hold in that underground storage system okay. and release at a slower rate so you're mirroring what's occurring under current conditions. All right, so current conditions also, there's a, there's a place where, where water gathers mm -hmm. and, and the geese love it because they hang out there. <laughs> so now it's like a little pond mm -hmm. that happens. So all that will go away. Yes. Okay, so that will no longer exist. Correct. Okay, I noticed that you'd also mentioned that no parking spaces will be Lost. There'll be a net, but I also, but I also on the street. On the street. street. But I also noticed that there was a compact space. Mm -hmm. Are are there any? How many spaces are now will be smaller than they were before? Uh, just the uh, the one space. That's the only one that's going to be reduced. That's the only compact space. Yes. Okay. By the so, emergency exit. Okay. And who will speak about what the pervious versus impervious is going to be on this site versus what a current condition is? Are you talking about the increase? Just the, yeah, no, the, just the percentages. What are they? Uh, do we do it? Will you be speaking to that, or is yeah, I else going to speak can, to that? It's in the storm management report. I don't have the percentage on the top of my head. All right, I was just wondering what the requirements were versus what you're going to hit. Are you? The requirement, actually the requirement based off of the CAFA regulations, which right. governs, is 90% impervious in the site. 90% impervious. So what is, just if you have some idea. Yeah, we actually have the calculation on the uh, zoning table. I just gotta look it up, my eyesight's terrible. We're at 69.5. So we're let, permitted 90% based off of the overall CAFA permit. Right. So you're allowed 90% and you're- 69. At 69%, you're, so you're way below what? Allow, is allowed by the- What's team. allowed. So you're more pervious than impervious. Well, so, we're more, it, we're, we're less impervious than allowed. You're we're less impervious than- 69.2, So you're, you're in better shape than what's, that's, what I'm getting. Okay. Attorneys are more eloquent than engineers. Yeah, well, you know, we just need to understand. That's all. As long as we all understand, we're good. Uh, okay. Other questions for other people, but that's not here. Thank you. Anybody else like that? Anybody want to, you want to address? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It has to be related to his testimony. Just came right. in. So he does have a clue. Questions you asked? Well, no, 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 no. You can, you can come in and talk, but you're, if you're going to ask this witness questions, it has to be related to the testimony that he gave for the last. Oh no, hour. it's not yeah. You can, you can still talk, but not at a later time because you didn't hear his testimony. So we awfully difficult to ask questions. Okay. You hear the testimony. Okay. Is there anybody else who has any questions for this witness? Motion to close it. Motion to close public comment. Second. All right, we're at eight. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Aye, sir. Excuse me, Francois. I apologize. We're at 8.35. Um, so we're at the halfway point of the hearing tonight. I have another application on. So I guess we are going to continue at another hearing date for this. Yeah. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Do we have a date? 
Do we have a motion? Do you have any idea where we stand in terms of the night we can adjourn this? It has to be adjourned to a specific date, time, and place. So today, uh, the next available date would be November 7th. Motion to carry to November yes. 7th. Yeah, 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 maybe we can soon. Let's have a discussion. So, there is a, what's the, does anybody know, 917 3rd, was that confirmed? I have no idea. I no? know nothing about 917 Okay. Um, I can check on 1017, but right now the next available date that doesn't have anything held is 11 Hang on, let me, let me double check something. Yeah. yeah. We need. We have issues in terms of contractual obligations that we have to get this thing heard before. Um, so, I'm just trying. I want to make sure I have the most recent um, schedule. If we can do a special hearing that's dedicated to this application, so we can get through this. Jack, if we carry it to the 7th of November, uh, they can still apply. <laughs> The whole meeting or half? Confirmed. For 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 a whole meeting or a half a meeting? For a half a meeting. Is that Andy? Is that going to do it? I mean, well, I have another one, but I don't know if they understand that or not. Depending what happens, we may be able to get the entire meeting. Yeah, okay. we finish the engineering, we just have a few touch up things, yeah. and then it's architectural and construction. So we need a motion to carry to the 17th of October. Second. 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 Second.
Yeah. So we can at least scrutinize it in between? Yeah. Yep. Cool. Are we having a five minute break? I'm sorry? Are we five minute break? A five minute break? <laughs> yes. A move for five minute break? <laughs> Second? Second. Second. Okay. Aye. Aye. I don't think there's any. I got to go check. Oh, here's okay. All right, let's. Uh, Bring the uh, bring the meeting back to order. Okay, get a roll call. Mayor John Moore here. Councilwoman Yvonne Clayton here. James Bonanno here. Jim Henry here. Jennifer Souter here. Alexis Taylor here. Eric Galipo here. I'm Daniel. just gonna correct everybody. It's Galipo. Gallopo? Yes. Okay, Sorry. it's good to know. Gallopo. No, it's good to know all this time. Okay. I, yeah, I, it's a periodic reminder. And, you know, if you're ever wondering, gallop like a horse. Gallopo. But, oh. I made a note of it. Uh, Daniel's absent. Um, Rick Lambert, absent. And Barbara, here. All right, we have the next uh, application. Um, 614 Cookman. Madam Chairwoman, I looked at the notices. All right, great. You ready? If I may, Andrew Karras from the firm Fox Groucho on behalf of the applicant, 614 Cookman LLC. I'll briefly go through what this application is about and then we'll get right to the testimony. The property we're talking about is 614 Cookman Ave, Lot 2, 404, Lot 6. We're here for a preliminary and final site plan approval. The lot is an existing, on the lot is an existing commercial building, it occupies 0.46 acres. It's a through lot between Cookman and Lake Avenues. There is 99.82 feet of frontage on Cookman Avenue with this building. The building was built, I believe, in or around the 1950s. I believe it was the old uh, Newberry building, JJ Newberry building. Yeah. We're in the CBD redevelopment area. What's interesting about this lot is because it is a through lot, it sits in two different districts. Uh, Cookman Ave, that portion of the building, is on the Cookman Avenue retail court. The back of the building, or say the back, the part of the building that is on Lake Avenue, is in the CBD mixed use district. So it saddles between two separate districts. The proposal here is simply to renovate the building to add some parking underneath 39 parking spaces and a balcony <coughs> on the building. Other than that, the building is essentially going to remain the same. Originally, we have filed an application to add residential units to the property. However, <coughs> because of the interpretation that we received with regard to the height, uh, because it is a through lot, um, the height is measured based upon that interpretation from the city on both Lake and Cookman. We couldn't do, according to that interpretation, the residential it would require a plan amendment. Consequently, we got rid of the residential. Thus, we're just here renovating the existing building that we have. The proposal, again, is to add on the ground floor 39 parking spaces, a parking garage, First floor, you're going to have commercial space. First floor, mezzanine. It's going to be additional commercial space, and you're going to have office on the second floor. A few witnesses I'll have testifying tonight. I have an engineer. I have my architect. We'll probably get through those two. Hopefully, we'll get through those two tonight. Start out with my engineer. Sir, please raise your right hand. Sir, the testimony about the building is that I do. Sure. My name is Michael Wesolowski. That's M I C H A E L. Last name W E S E. I'm sorry. Okay, sorry. It's W E S E L O S K I. Sir, can you please give us the benefit of your qualifications? Sure. I'm a project manager with Mid-Atlantic Engineering Partners. I've been practicing engineering in the state of New Jersey uh, since 2005, and I am also a licensed professional engineer in New Jersey. Okay. 
And you've testified before boards on previous occasions? I have, and yes. And you qualified as an expert engineer, am I correct? Yes. I may offer him as an engineer to testify on this application. And all your licenses are current? Correct. Okay. Michael, you're familiar with the property at issue at 614 Cookman Avenue, am I correct? Yes. Why don't we take a look first at the site plan that you prepared? We're going to mark that, and then we're going to go through the plan. Sure, if you prefer it, do you have uh, renderings prepared? Or if you prefer to stick to the site plan, we can do Let's that. first identify the site, the site plan, and then we'll go through the renderings. This is A1 for identification. What's that the last revision date for this? June 1st, 2022. Okay. Let's go to the front page. All right, just identify the site where the property is and then what is existing on the site. For the property, the best exhibit here might be the Google image here. Property is located between Cookman Avenue to the north. Lake Avenue to the south, slightly south, further beyond Lake Avenue lies Wesley Lake. Um, the existing building, or the <coughs> I should say, is predominantly an existing building um, with prior commercial retail uses that match those of the surrounding area. And this would be considered a real lot, seeing that it goes right from Cushman Ave all the way to Lake Avenue, am I correct? That's correct. And it's an existing commercial building, correct? Yes. And it sits within two separate districts within the uh, CBD redevelopment area, am I correct? That's correct. Dick. Cookman Retail District that's on Cookman, and then you have the CBD mixed <coughs> use on Lake Avenue, am I correct? You are correct. And they both provide height, maximum height that's allowed at 45. Yes. All right. What is, once we go through a little bit of the existing conditions on the site, um, and then we'll go through what we proposed. Page now, which is our existing conditions plan. Then you can see Kirkland Avenue to the north, Lake Avenue to the south, and the predominance again of the lot is comprised of the. Excuse me, will you speak into the mic, please? Sure. Yeah, and can you zoom on that so the public can see that? Again, Cookman Avenue to the north, Lake Avenue to the south, uh, existing buildings both to the east and west, and the predominance of the site is the subject building um, with small amounts of sidewalk within the adjacent to the right of way, which is on the Lake Avenue end. The Cookman Avenue end the building is on the property line. It indicates that on the northern portion of Cookman Avenue, it's a two-story building, but as you come back towards Lake, Correct. That's correct, simply due to the elevation difference between those two streets. Continue. What is being proposed? Move now to sheet three for geometry, signage, and striping plan. Proposed improvements uh, predominantly include interior renovations, facade renovations, and an approximately 1,200 square foot addition to the Lake Avenue or Southerly project frontage. Um, as Mr. Harris told you earlier, uh, this floor that you see here being the ground level floor is accessed from Lake Avenue via a two-way drive aisle to get you to the proposed parking spaces. And how many parking spaces are being added onto that ground floor? 39 spaces. And the drive aisles, what width? Interior to the building, it's at least 24 feet. And that drive aisle would, would it eliminate any on street parking? What is existing and what would be in front afterwards? Along Lake Avenue today, there exists six on street parking spaces. To accommodate this proposed access to the building, we would lose two with a net result of four proposed on street spaces. Again, to clarify, existing six, remaining four. However, you'll be creating additional parking for the building and within the CBD redevelopment area to serve as 
other developments that may contractually uh, agree to utilize this site or for this particular building. Am I correct? You are correct. Okay. Uh, within this ground floor level here, several of the rooms that the building will utilize include the lobby entrance from this street, Lake Avenue, small retail space, the aforementioned driveway access to the building, and the small trash room in the bottom left or southwest corner. Is there any retail space currently as existing that fronts on Lake Avenue with this building? I don't believe so. Then panning up to the Cookman Avenue frontage, while there is no access, pedestrian or vehicular, from this frontage, uh, just continuing to present the application. There are a couple mechanical rooms in the building's uh, ground floor northeast corner. Okay. Getting into a bit more detail about the proposed parking spaces. As we said, there are 39 proposed spaces with this application. 29 of those are sized at eight by 18 foot, whereas your ordinance requires eight and a half foot width minimum. Um, within those 29 spaces, we are proposing two ADA spaces, both of which are van accessible. Four of the spaces shown in the lower left are sized at 10 feet wide by 18 foot depth. Both of these aforementioned widths, the eight foot and the 10 foot, are proposed as such to accommodate the required column locations for the upper floors. Five of these spaces in the upper right or northeast are proposed at eight foot by 16 foot. We would consider these compact spaces and would sign them accordingly, sign or stripe them accordingly. And finally, in about the center, which is better shown in the rendering we've prepared. Um, center on the left side of the building here, there is a new stairwell that encroaches into one space. That space, given its reduced size, would be proposed to accommodate motorcycle park. And to comply with the recent 2021 EV ordinance, uh, we would provide the one required to make ready space within this ground level floor. Again, as most of the building consists, most of the property, excuse me, consists of building, there's not much exterior to it regarding the site. Um, there are a small amount of sidewalk improvements as shown here. I will zoom in, if you allow me to pan to the subsequent sheet. This is now the grading plan that shows on the Cookman Ave frontage, which is essentially the, the next floor above the ground level. Um, there is some sidewalk proposed here to accommodate proposed building access and maintain ADA compliance. Um, also along the Lake Ave southerly frontage, there's sidewalk replacement to accommodate the proposed uh, minor building addition, doorways, dry aisle, um, that that sidewalk would be replaced uh, to match and meet existing condition. As I had mentioned, trash room is proposed in the building's lower left or southwest corner. Trash and recycling would be stored here, brought out for curbside pickup by private hauling. What about utilities for the site? Utilities for the site would look to reuse the existing infrastructure to the greatest degree practical, and that is including uh, sewer, water, and gas and electric, any utility that can be reused would be. What about mechanical equipment? Uh, mechanical equipment, I believe, would be rooftop, but I would defer that testimony to our architect. Regarding um, some site grading, uh, again, given the elevation difference between Lake Ave and Cookman Ave, uh, you'll clearly see an elevation difference there. The project does not propose to adjust the finished floor elevations of the existing building. Uh, the elevation along Lake Ave is around elevation 9, and Cookman Ave is around elevation 17. Moving, uh, just moving along to stormwater management, uh, given that the 
project site is 100% developed and 100% impervious. Um, the proposed application will not increase flows in any manner. Um, drainage patterns will be maintained as they exist today with downspouts that discharge through the face of the curb into either Cookman or Lake Avenue and continue overland flow to the existing municipal stormwater system. Moving on to landscaping, uh, there are existing street trees along both. Just pardon me, I'll back up a minute and just go back to the ground level view that you saw before to give you a better perspective as I continue. I apologize for that. There are street trees along both Cookman Ave and Lake Ave. Due to the improvements proposed along Lake Avenue, particularly the addition of the driveway, one of those street trees is proposed to be relocated. Um, so I'm sure we'll get into soon. And per the direction of your planner, we're happy to, to change that species of those trees and replace all of them to a sycamore type, which is more suited to the, uh, the saltwater environment of the city. What about lighting from the site? Well, our site plan did not yet a lighting plan as part of the revisions that we'll submit to both you and your professionals we will include a lighting plan um, that models all the existing fixtures along each of the street frontages as well as the architectural uh, down lights door lights etc to give you a complete picture of how the site is properly illuminated Touch on loading for the building. Uh, given its small size and the various smaller commercial retail spaces within, no substantial deliveries are anticipated. These would be provided by your typical uh, USPS, UPS type box truck um, and would be in keeping with deliveries that are happening on a daily basis to all the surrounding uses. And we'll just make use of the existing wraps of those drivers take today. That concludes my direct testimony. Again, rather brief, but given that the site is predominantly building. Any questions from the board before I get to the reports? Um, from what I from what I can see is that there's an existing there's an existing driveway that will go away. That's going to be totally removed. Yes, yes, the existing uh, curb cut, depressed curb, and garage overhead door at the building's southwest corner along Lake, Lake Avenue will be removed. Southeast corner. Yes, I apologize. Okay, just get my direction straight. Okay. You're going to go through it when you go through the report, and it has to do with the street trees. and. I'm starting to become a tree expert, but no. Uh, somebody uh, suggested instead of uh, what was proposed, the sycamore, using a, 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 a American hackenberry, just because uh, of the benefit to the... Yeah, we the building it. itself and everything, but I mean... So American Hackenberry, and they're the only ones that have been uh, recommended by the Monmouth County, the DPW Division of Shade Tree, but the American Sycamore has not been. And they're more wind resistant and also provides direct food and shelter to a range of birds and butterflies. So if we're looking to help the environment more, if we can switch to Hackenberries. Whatever the board prefers. Uh, the, the comment in here was for Sycamore to find in that. Mm -hmm. Whatever the board prefers. Right. And then why don't I screw it on with our staff? I didn't do it for this one. I guess I'm still a little rusty. 
Mayor, I have no, no objection to the recommendation of a half belly. Um, they're fine. They Thank can you. be a little dirty sometimes because of the fruit they make. The birds leave technicolor poop from those. Okay, but thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> I, I do have, I'm sorry, I don't mean to sidetrack, but, and this may not be the right uh, witness as to the intended uses, but I know that the plan says outdoor dining. So he testified that loading would just be small, probably USPS, UPS type things. Would that be the case if it's a restaurant type use or a microbrewery? It, whatever typically services the restaurants in Astoria or the other buildings that are situated on the street would be the same type of truck that would service this building. One thing I do know, and I've argued it before, the CBD redevelopment plan does not have a provision in there for those. Uh, so I have always argued that it has its own parking standard. The fact that it does not have a standard for loading, because we're in a semi-urban area in the downtown, that there is no requirement for a loading space. Well, I respectfully disagree. Um, I. It's just an irony because when I was taking my site photos that day, there is a semi-trailer truck making its Cisco delivery to Mogo. And, uh, you know, unfortunately that's on the Cookman Avenue side. They don't have that, that's not Cisco. Right. Um, so, on one hand, you know, I'm hopeful that any use within the building that might need big deliveries can be directed to the Lake Avenue frontage as opposed to continuing to have semi-tractor trailer trucks trying to make deliveries on the Avenue. Okay. And not in unreasonable yeah, Lake Avenue can certainly accommodate. Sure. And it's a lot better. So the more, more of them we can get on that side, the better. You no, know, we're fortunate. It's a through lot, so that can probably be accommodated. Is there yeah. an ele elevator here? We'll go through that with your professional. Okay. But yes. Okay. The driveway entrance. You mentioned the drive aisle being 24 feet inside the building. What is the driveway width, and what is the garage door width? The driveway width is. 20 feet the garage door itself i would have to defer to our architect i don't have that width specified on our plans as you see there 20 feet for the driveway apron okay. and in your opinion is 20 feet wide enough for two-way circulation yes uh, given the, the lower intensity use the relatively minimal amount of parking spaces there um, and the slow speeds, which will have to be utilized to enter and exit the building, 20 feet is sufficient to accommodate both in and out maneuvers. By the way, to make note, there's an elevator to the right. Mm -hmm. As can I assume that at the driveway, uh, at the garage door, there will be some sort of a warning device uh, for Pedestrians who happen to be walking by. Um, yes, those are comments from your engineer, and we're happy to work with him to his satisfaction to ensure safety of both vehicular and pedestrian traffic. Is it clear, or I, did I miss it? Who who is going to be able to park here? Do we know yet? We anticipate <coughs> that it's going to be people that are utilizing the building. Okay. Uh, businesses within the building indicated there are tenants there. Um, that's commercial. But also, you have an office use. So, right, so would it be customers of the retail or no? Or the these are employees? And maybe there's other buildings uh, within the CBD. When you look at the CBD redevelopment, it allows to have parking off site of mm -hmm. any building in 
CBD area. So we haven't determined fully who's going to park there, but we're trying to provide as much parking as we can in the CBD area to accommodate uses. Is is one of the uses a garage, like a like a parking garage? Is it going to be a parking garage? I'm asking if that if that's. I can have Mr. Sacken provide testimony after we get through with the engineer and the architect as far as the parking. Okay. Okay. Bales. Just looking at the uh, parking layout, the columns that are there uh, exist currently. I would defer that to our architect. Okay. Well, assuming they exist, um, is there is there any opportunity to make parking spaces wider than AZ? It looks like there might be. It's the only reason I'm bringing it up. Uh, there's like some some space that exists between the walls and the columns and the nearest parking stall, but maybe they could be wider enough. Eight feet is just too tight. If it created any better, I think it should. And we'll we take a look at that to the extent that we can widen those parking spaces. It seems as though it might be a little hard to tell. I don't know if you could tell Doug where where the where these columns are and how which spaces specifically they might impact. But we would like to, if we could see that a little more clearly, and then we could determine, help determine if, if something different has to happen with those spaces. Okay. Anyone else? Yep. Anything? One last question. The, the stormwater management, um, you mentioned, I guess, currently the both on the equipment app side. In the lake ab side, mm -hmm. more discharges through the face of the curve. Uh, on the lake ab side, where the building's expanding out, the downstuff will tie into the existing location to do the same thing there. Or yes, yes, we would have to tie them together to maintain that and avoid an additional discharge over the side. And have you, have you looked into at all any? Uh, public infrastructure available for storm sewer for, for that for the for the area or I mean the preference would be to make a direct connection but if it's not there it's not there I'm just asking if yes I, I don't believe there are any any portions of the municipal system in, um, certainly not along the frontage and not in close proximity to the frontage that would end up necessitating a, a somewhat unfeasible extension to reach those places. So are we saying that there's any any increase or decrease in, in stormwater in this new development as opposed to the way it is today? Uh, no, there would be no change. No change. Correct. It's the same. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. Anything else from the board? Anything else from the professionals? All right, you want to go through the uh, reports? The first report I have in front of me is an insight report dated September 15, 2022, on the market of B1 identification. Mm -hmm. And then we take a look at what's been marked B1 for identification. Let's go through this report and number of comments. We've had an opportunity to review this report before, correct? Yes. Go to page two, okay. statements number one under the heading site plan for the review of lifts and seating sub areas on the clarified plans. No objection to that, am I correct? Correct. Number two, with dimensions for the existing sidewalk along frontages and not to provide you provide plans. <coughs> yes. Utilities have not been provided, location of the nearest hydrant shall be shown on the plan, am I correct? Yes. Take care of that. In the event of easements, we'll provide for that. Am I correct? Correct. Um, location is so in size when you propose loading space or not are not shown. There is no <coughs> correct. Exterior <coughs> lighting plan will submit an exterior lighting plan. Am I correct? Yes. Uh, 
um, phase of the project. There is no phase of this project. Am I correct? You are correct. Site maintenance. Um, by Mr. Sackman to provide testimony as far as that. Uh, colorized site rendering. Do you have a colorized site rendering? I do. Uh, you can mark that as a C card notification. And for clarification, the site rendering that you see here again depicts the ground floor parking that would be accessed <coughs> by the gallery. <coughs> Thank you. Continuing on number 10, the steering counter equipment will have the architect that will provide testimony relative to that. Uh, signage again will have the architect as well as uh, number 12, the architectural elements that are being proposed. Number 13, a two foot wide area of full depth pavement repair shall be indicated as the service he is uh, proposed to be replaced or constructed. No objection with that, correct? Correct. Same with regard to number 14, will indicate the is for pavement repair, correct? Yes. Lighting plan, again, we will propose that. Existing utility connections have already testified, am I correct? Yes. Um, refuge storage area. You already made mention of that on the plans. You made mention that it's also going to be a private hauler, am I correct? Yes. And because it's a private hauler, we can adjust in terms of the refuse collection depending upon the need for the <coughs> correct? Absolutely. Uh, 18, noise, air, and water quality. There's going to be no, uh, Nothing injurious with regard to noise, air, and water, water quality. All the permitted use or this site will accommodate permitted uses. Am I correct? Yes. Stormwater control, we've already addressed this. Am I correct? Yes. Parking stalls, compact space number 20, we've addressed that already. Am I correct? Yes. Including providing signage to identify the compact parking spaces. Correct? Yes. 21, the size of the space, we're going to take a look at that and revisit it whether or not we can widen those eight spaces. Am I correct? Yes. Exceptions required for the driveway width will be requested an exception with regard to that. Am I correct? Yes. But testimony that what you did put into the plan can accommodate two way traffic. Am I correct? Yes. Site distances, you'll add that. Am I correct? Correct. As well as the dimensions with regard to the driveway setback. That will be added to the plan. Correct? Yes. Loading operations are already testified. There is no loading space. Correct? Correct. And that you'd be fine with trying to direct. The loading to lake as opposed to Kirkman. Am I correct? Yes. Right. When you set, the, uh, there's no required parking for the non residential use of the site. There is no residential use being proposed. Am I correct? You are correct. When you set, there are no residential use sets of anything, correct? Yes. Um, warning system, we'll take a look at that and we'll look at the engineer career that the warning system can ensure that that's the same thing, correct? Yes. Straight and mechanical equipment will be the architect. ADA accessibility, um, touch upon that. We've already testified as to the parking space in the garage. Am I correct? Yes. Anything else? Um, the ADA accessibility? No. Uh, emergency vehicle access. Uh, emergency vehicles will not be going into the garage. Am I correct? That's correct. They can continue utilization of both existing roadways. Um, but they can cook into access to site and event of emergency. Am I correct? Yes. Um, 32, uh, sanitary sewer connection, no issue with providing uh, this information, um, but there is an existing connection, am I correct? Yes. The outside agency approval, no objection with regard to any of that. NJDEP, flood hazard, and capital purpose. Can you that? Sure. Um, given the project site's distance from the ocean front and the relatively, again, low intensity development, particularly the threshold of parking spaces, we do not believe requires a CAF permit. We intend to submit for a letter of uh, jurisdictional determination to the department to confirm that. Uh, we do, however, believe that given the uh, project's, project's frontage along Lake Avenue and proximity, proximity excuse me, to Wesley Lake, the project will require a standalone flood hazard permit, which we will submit for 
And that's all in common with regard to that report, correct? Yes. Let's go now to the planning report for our hints in September 16, 2022. D2. Okay, as indicated on the report, it is a through off between the and Copeland, correct? Yes. What I'm going to do is have you go first. I want to touch upon the use on 2.0. There's a comment in there as to what the uses are going to be. You don't know yet. Am I correct? Yes. Um, there's going to be office use upstairs, but the exact Tenants, we don't know until the building is rented out. Am I correct? That's correct. And in terms, there is a brewery as reflected on the plan that intends to lease some of the space. Am I correct? Yes. But as far as any other tenants, we don't know until we get leases out of proposed leases, so we don't know who's going to occupy it. The intention is for permitted users to occupy the site. Am I correct? Yes. Continuing on, we go to page 413, the National Building Coverage. We are complying with that, and my first as well as the equipment. Yes. Um, we will address through the architect the ground floor use and the percentages of the building relative to retail and other uses, um, as well as indeed the ground floor frontage. Penthouse, we're going to set back up some existing penthouse and retail penthouse that will not be changed. Am I correct? Yes. That's an existing condition on this site, am I correct? Correct. Um, all right. With regard to street orientation, at the power pitch, we'll have the architect provide testimony with regard to that, as well as we continue on the other issues having to do with the signage, color, windows, storefronts. Site design, if we can go right to page 9 to 15, streetscape. Uh, no changes are being proposed with regard to the frontage. Um, that, am I correct? Correct. The same with regard to weight. Um, however, a single street trees proposed with existing driveways to be proposed. Am I correct? Yes. And again, <coughs> of course, with any recommendation from the board, whatever type of street tree you're going to be Am I correct? Yes. Six and also 4.2 if they want an American Civil War. Some other tree would have no issue with that. Am I correct? Correct. Street parking 39 car to address the parking car size as well as the EV parking space on page 20. Correct? Yes. Bicycle parking. None is being proposed because there are no residential units that are being proposed for this development. Am I correct? Correct. Refuge recycling uh, storage is already addressed. Am I correct? Yes. As well as voting areas 4.6. Am I correct? Yes. 4.7 will touch upon utility services. Correct? Yes. Signage, I will sit with the architect. And I think that's, I hit everything. Okay, the report. Is there anything else that I can ask? Well, we may go back and revisit some of these with the architect. Oh, absolutely. Or with yeah. Thank you. Yeah. On the insight report number seven, no phasing. How about staging? Where are you going to, how are you going to build this? Where are you going to stage this project? I'll have Mr. Sagan provide Okay. I'm sorry, did you did you go over where or about the bicycles? About the bicycle parking or is that somebody else that's going no, to talk? I touched upon it. And, and said what? there are no residents, there's no bike parking. All right. Okay. Uh, I'd like you to take a look at uh, Page 11 of this report. Uh, which report? The uh, CCH report. Mm -hmm. Okay. That, uh, that's the existing condition, correct? And you're you talking mean, about utilities? I'm, ta I'm talking about the uh, picture on the page. Page, on page 11, 11 yes. that was? Yes. Okay. The canopy over the uh, door, are they going to be removed? Well, our, the architect will address him. Okay. Is it possible also, if these meters are going to be relocated, is it possible to take the uh, conduit off the face of the building? It is the intent to relocate the meters. Uh, I believe we'll probably still have to explore the route that those conduits will take, but we certainly can. 
Well, if, if the facade is going to remain the brick facade, it would certainly be much more pleasing aesthetically to remove as much of that type of thing as possible. Yes, we can explore that, and it's possible our architect may have for it more information along those lines. Okay, thanks. You will. Could we consider? I know that you'd mentioned about the bicycle parking that internally could we consider that out uh, externally that we'd be able to put uh, some some more of those hoops that we have that are standard to the city outside yeah, no, so that if there are people that want to put their bicycles outside I mean, is there an objection to provide secure interior bike parking for commercial use you know ordinarily you don't provide for commercial use you're providing it for residential use um, you know, I just, I, to be honest, I've never seen it in a building that's not going to be Your client is asking you to shut up. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'll test it. We'll talk about it. We'll talk about it under the... <laughs> Need eyes back here. Under his testimony. Need to throw something. <laughs> <laughs> um, so have, have we completed the, the report? I believe we have. Yeah. yeah. Anything else to testify? All right, uh, any questions from the planning board members of this witness? Any questions of the our professionals of this witness? Okay, got to get a motion to open to the public. So moved. Second. Okay, anybody from the public that would like to ask any questions of this witness? Aye. Okay. Anybody from the public that would like to ask a question of this witness? Okay. Hi, Ed Lacombe, 603 Lake Avenue, Nasbury Park. You mentioned that there was a net uh, loss of two parking spaces along Lake Avenue. Is that correct? Correct. <clears throat> but there were going to be two ADA spaces in front of that building? There will be, there's one ADA space that exists right. on Lake Avenue today, and we will maintain that on the exterior. In addition to that, we'll be providing two ADA spaces interior to the building. Okay. So the only, the one existing ADA external spaces staying as is? It may be slightly relocated, but it will be maintained. Mm -hmm. There will still be one space along the Lake Avenue. Does that require a buffer next to it? I'm never sure whether that's... A parking there spot, are, or depending on whether it's van accessible or not, there are certain pile requirements that are must be installed adjacent to that ADA <clears> space, and we would include that as well. Okay, and you were mentioning, or Barbara was asking about the driveway being eliminated. Did I hear that properly? The or? existing driveway. The existing driveway, because you need a driveway to get in Correct. to the parking lot. Okay, so it may. Uh, I don't have to take another look when I walk back home exactly where that is now, but, um, and you're also, you're coming out towards the lake more, right? The building itself, so is I that guess. correct? Can you pull up, oh, it's actually, it's under the floor. Yeah, that's correct. Okay. Yeah, I think it's in front of the building. Yeah, right. But but the you're you're coming out <clears throat> into that existing sidewalk area towards the lake. Correct. Correct. How many feet are you talking there? Twelve. Is it twelve? I would defer that to our architect. Okay. So is it just at a certain height you're coming out that distance? You know, is the building kind of coming like that, or is the whole building going to be kind of expanded <coughs> towards uh, the lake? I would respectfully defer that to our architect. That's not misleading. Okay. Um, that's it for me. Thank you. Anybody, any other? Come, come on up. 
Hi, uh, Noreen Ross, also 603 Lake Avenue. Um, my question has to do with the, the um, pulling out, I guess, the 1,200 square feet that's now going to be pulled out to the pedestrian walkway. Have you done any, like, studies or anything about how um, that's going to become, like, a choke point for pedestrians on that street, especially given that you don't have a loading zone? And so if you've got all these trucks coming in and out, pressuring that spot, loading and unloading, and then you've only got how many feet of sidewalk now? The sidewalk is going to be maintained, am I correct? That is correct. Yeah, we're not taking any space away from the sidewalk, am I correct? Yes, indeed. Provide an approximate dimension. This is very approximate, just scaled off my rendering here. Looks like the distance from the proposed building facade along Lake Avenue to the curb is about 17 feet. So there is still ample sidewalk room to accommodate the existing pedestrian traffic. Hmm. Okay, um, but then again, given the sort of loading and unloading question about, um, I just know the trucks pull up now and... Oh, okay, no statement, just a question. Okay, given this rendering, where would the trucks be pulling up and loading? Good job. <laughs> I'm going to get this. <laughs> Perry Mason is here. <laughs> if there's an available parking space, trucks would certainly utilize that space as a, as a first priority. And if there's not? The way in a semi-urban area they pull up to any other building located within the downtown would be the summer, correct? Yes. So what was that? Where would it they be? They do exactly what they do for the entire Okay. Yeah. So double parking is the. Okay. And just one more thing about the exterior bike racks. Um, where would they go in this scenario? Is there would they fit on the sidewalk as well, or? We would need to look at this and, and determine an ideal location that does not inhibit the pedestrian traffic. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Any other uh, questions from the public? Okay. <laughs> uh, Colleen Dion, 603 Lake. I just have a question with the parking. So if we're losing two parking spots in Zone 4, is there anything to accommodate additional parking for us within that zone? Are you asking out of the engineer? I don't know who would answer that question, so. Your question should be directed to the witness. Yeah, the plan that's presented is that there are going to be two less parking spaces on the street. However, there are 39 more parking spaces that are being created on this site. But that wasn't for use for Zone 4. That was supposed to be used for commercial I, I don't building. Know what you mean by zone four. It, it wouldn't be public parking is what you're trying to say. Right. I think. Right, right. Residential parking. So we, the two spots that you're taking away are part of the residential parking for the people that live in that area. So we are losing two spots for residential parking in that area. So I'm just asking, like, is there anything to accommodate? Is, is anything within the 39 spots going to help accommodate that loss? No, that, that's going to be utilized for either this building or this is exactly the site how that parking lot is. Okay. Any other questions from the public? Okay, motion to close public. So moved. Second. Andrew. Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. Um, okay. All Next. Uh, we have, just to be clear, we have about 20 minutes left of for the evening. Is there, are we going to be able to do this? I think my architect at least identify the plans to okay. show exactly, briefly, what we're looking to do, and then pick it up next time. Okay. Who is that for the time being?
Okay. You only need one of them? Yeah, yeah. They're all identical. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I guess it's already there, so I'm gonna press that. I'm not needed. Yeah. Yeah, because it's going to keep on happening. Just wait for it to show up over there. There it is. Oh, yeah. Yep. I do. Sure. Uh, Daniel Condator, C O N D A T O R E. Sure. I'm a licensed architect in the state of New Jersey since 2008. I am the owner of Moat Architects, loaded, lo located at 621 uh, Lake Avenue, and I've been in front of this board, I believe, on many occasions at this point. So uh, everybody knows me, hopefully. And your license is current? Yes. So you offer them as an expert architect. Okay. Um, and you provide, prepare, and provide plans relative to this application, is that correct? That's correct. So those are plans that are in front of us. That's correct. Why do we mark those as May 18th, 2022. May 18th, 2022. Yeah, so I, I think um, as far as overall the project scope, I mean, what we're trying to do is take a building that has a large, large square footprint that is, uh, was, was a, um, uh, like a department store type use when it was originally constructed. Uh, in today's market, in today's time, that, that, that floor plate is a large floor plate to, to rent out. So, you know, we're working with the owner to kind of reinvent the building and create a space and, and leasable spaces and rentable spaces that activate uh, the street on Cookman, uh, more indicative of the smaller type uh, shops that you have around 2,000 square feet. Um, so we don't actually know what tenants we have, but um, you know one of the important things about this building, and you know when you're on Cookman and then you're on Lake Avenue, if you didn't know you were looking at the same building, you wouldn't know it's 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 unified. And I think another thing that working with Carter um, that we tried to do was try to connect that and make that bridge between. The Cookman side and the Lake Ave side. The Lake Ave side, I think we're all familiar with. It's a very large uh, kind of inhibiting building uh, uh, with uh, you know small punch window openings. It's not engaged into the street at all. Um, there's really no uh, transparency uh, to Lake. So if you're ever in this space, if you come in from Cookman when it was a retail shop, like you would shop in there where they had the outdoor equipment and things like that, but you were, you wouldn't know that 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 view and that that open space is on the other side of that wall. So we're really overall arching goal of the project is kind of re reinvent that or re you know bring that building back to life and, and make that connection. Hey, so you take a look at page four of the planners report it has the facade on the app which has small windows and not very wide, am I correct? Yes, that's correct. And, and that at the same time is provide flexibility and flexibility also is code related. Um, so when we start to break up the building into spaces, as you'll see on the next floor, that impacts what we're doing in the garage as far as uh, the lower level, which right now is, is an existing storage warehouse area. But we had to create new egress uh, you know, platforms and stuff because some of the spaces might need two means of egress on the, on the, the Cookman Ave. So, uh, you can see the general layout that was kind of talked about. Uh, one thing I, I will add is we talked about increasing the spaces. Uh, I'll probably talk about that really quick. Um, 
and I can clarify that on a revision, there is some structural curbing and other things that happen around the perimeter that do not allow the parking spaces to get any closer to the exterior walls, right? So it's not level. This whole floor plate is not level. There are footings and, and, and like kind of buttress type situations along here that kind of held this line. And then the grid itself of the columns, um, I think might be a little more clear on my plan. You can see the grid that we're dealing with. Um, uh, we were able to, you know, do some tweaks. There was, a, there was an existing staircase that was in the middle that we were infilling. But primarily, you know, uh, the entrance is off of Lake Ave. You come in, the existing floor slab is approximately two feet lower, so there'll be a slight ramp down. Uh, this is the existing uh, elevator uh, shaft that's there now. There's an existing staircase here, and there's an existing staircase here. And then we're proposing uh, a staircase along the wall here for the, the backside of some other tenants. We have some existing utility spaces. Uh, the addition itself, just to kind of clarify that we're coming out 12 feet uh, from the existing building face. Um, that is not the full depth of the property line. I, th I believe we have another five feet till we actually get to the property line. Um, that allows for you know our doors not to swing into the right of way and uh, maintain uh, the clear width of the existing sidewalk along Lake Ave. Um, this is being proposed as an entry lobby uh, so you can come into this lobby here and take the stairs or the elevators and that will connect all the floors above. So if you're, you know, if we have a office tenant on the existing second floor and someone went to work, they park, they come into a lobby and they, if they go upstairs. And then, you know, uh, as much as we can, we're trying to activate uh, the, the street here. There's no retail as currently. There, must, there was a little, if you looked at some photos, some glass kind of window display, but that I think has been activated in 20 years. It's been closed up. So we're trying to provide a little uh, retail area, maybe a cafe or a small food shop or something like that in the area. And then this is the primary entrance to the garage, an existing staircase, and a place to, to store trash uh, other than leaving it outside um, in, in dumpsters. I know we're pressed, so I'm trying to move quickly, but thorough at the same time. Um, so this is a, the main level coming off Cookman. Uh, so what we're doing here, uh, if you, the original plan has a glass storefront that was along the property line, and then there was a recess in the middle, and then there was the entrance doors, and, and then it came back out. Um, that was primarily designed in the sense that it was one single tenant, right? And then you enter in the middle, then you have access to the full store. But we're trying to you know, break this up and make it uh, uh, more friendly to, to smaller spaces. So in order to do that, we are gonna you know, rebuild that storefront, pull the storefront in uh, so the doors don't swing out into the right of way and uh, kind of create this uh, recessed entry from, from the main uh, sidewalk. And then the second floor um, goes over the top of this area. And then there's also a little bit of an existing roof canopy awning slash that's that's there that we're maintaining so this is a nice covered area uh over the doors um that we're trying to provide um and then and again we have a, a you know uh, an e egress stair in this corner that exists that connects to the office space above uh, these are the proposed tenants areas so if we need a second means of egress we have a corridor with a staircase that take us down through the garage and out Similar here, we were creating a, an access way um, to get to a second means of egress. And then there, here's this uh, larger space uh, that we're kind of envisioning. So now what we're, we're engaging now is also to create you know, exterior space. We think it's important. I think we all know that uh, using exterior space for outdoor sitting and, and engaging the, the Lake Ave uh, views and, and providing that open air feel. Um, right off the back of that at that floor level uh, above the addition on the first floor is the uh, an outdoor seating area whether it's dining we you know based on what the tenant is how they want to use it but we want to open up that existing wall so we have you know proposing a double door with glass and storefront and then here we're showing 
maybe they're like a garage door. You see that a lot with a lot of the restaurants now and establishments and different things where you can kind of roll up that door and have this great indoor outdoor space that really engages. So we're taking now, you know, what's on Cookman and bringing people in and carrying them through and kind of creating this, like, I think what we're, like a harmony between the two elevations as far as, as a use. Um, so that's the... Uh, so basically you're taking what now exists, a blank wall, just basically a blank brick wall, mm -hmm. creating all this interest in use that doesn't exist right now. That's correct, yes. Um, so this is, right now that, this is all double height space, and here we have uh, an, an existing uh, mezzanine level that we are going to maintain and also provide uh, additional outdoor area, more glazing, more transparency. Uh, these spaces might be connected, right? The, 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 whoever has the, the lower level might have that, or this might be, could be separated at some point as its own independent space to rent. So we're not sure, but we're, we're providing that flexibility for that. Um, so that's the mezzanine level, and then up here used to be, this is a, the second floor, this used to be um, where the, the fitness was, the gym. So this is just an open floor plate. We talked about office space, possibly uh, different types of uh, you know, working areas. Um, there's a natural step in here if you've ever been up there. Uh, so there's a natural step with an ADA ramp. Uh, these stairs exist now. All three of these stairways exist now. And then again, you know, providing some outdoor area. So if this is an office space, I mean, similar to what happens to the west of us in, in the music, right? The lake house. I'm actually in the lake house building myself on the top floor. And uh, we have our outdoor balcony area, which is, you know, very appealing to my, my, my team. We, we use it for lunch. And I think that it's very important to have these outdoor spaces for people. Um, and, the, and the elevator shaft, you know, goes all the way up to this level. Um, and from a plan standpoint, that's, you know, what we're, we're trying to create. Um, this is a, a roof plan. Uh, this is the existing uh, penthouse uh, that is, is talked about. And there's this screen wall here that exists that is maintaining. There are some mechanical units that are existing here. Um, there will be new mechanical units. We can't say what those units are going to be until we know who's going to lease the space. We have a lot of depth in this building. Um, so I mean, we would try the best to extend is to locate units in the middle of this roof where they wouldn't be visible whether without, without screening because just the natural depth in the view angles. And we can provide those, those sight lines. That's not a problem. Should something need to be closer to the edge, we would, we would screen it uh, appropriately. So, um, that, that's this. Moving on. These are not as good as my renderings, but these are through the height of the building. Okay, so the existing height of the building on um, Cookman side is uh, 30 feet to the top of the parapet. And then on the back side, Street level. Oh, I wish they would have put a, a summary on here. That would have been nice. Yeah. 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 I'm at 30 here plus another nine foot five, right? Because zeros, this is a matching floor slab for a Cookman. Yeah, I can clarify that. So, no, so is, it, is it higher than it is? We're not raising the building. We're right, not changing so, the so height. So the height will remain the same. Yes, the height's okay. going to remain the same. Compliance with the forty-five feet max. Yes. Mm -hmm. Even though the Lake Avenue side is more stories than the Cookman Avenue. Yes. Side, right. uh, so just quickly, uh, here's the exit. Here's the elevation that uh, we're proposing, I have renderings that show a little bit better than what we're showing here. This is an, uh, an existing awning line that comes in. 
This will be new storefront area that gets installed based on uh, you know how the final tenant layout. You know, if there's a tenant that is bigger than another, we might not have this many doors. We have less doors. So that I mean, it's hard to um, you know nail it down exactly. But to uh, clarify, so that's still going to be recessed, or is it not going to be recessed? It's recessed. Yes. Okay. Yeah. But it's just the middle chunk is being filled in. Middle chunk is being. So, like in the middle of that storefront, the the storefronts. The storefront now is not. It's only recessed in the middle, and the existing storefront is at the face on the property line. Okay. Right. Um, I can I can show you a picture really fast. Yeah. I should have one in here. I just want to understand the intent better. Yeah, because. So this is not. This is flush here. Right. So. We're pushing, we're getting rid of this, and then we're holding a line five feet back of this. So everything is recessed. So you understand that? Does that make sense? But the, the part that's furthest recessed. It, that's coming back, back, that's coming out. Yes, that's so correct. You're yes. going to have a straight line. A straight, it's straight line. It's recessed five feet back, but it's going to be a straight line all the way across. Yes, that's right. correct. Yeah, if that helps. I understand it. I don't think it helps. OK. Um, Okay, but now I better yeah. understand it. I thought you were yeah. So this is all okay. this is all flush right at the. So we're pushing the majority of the storefront back. Can you go to your elevation again? Yep. Elevation. So this um, all is is okay. recessed and can it's you, flush. So it's all going to be the same setback. Yes. Yeah. Um, on, just to make sure that we've said it, these are glass. This is all, all represents glass panels. Yes, this is all glass. On the future drawings, just indicating anything. Yeah. That, yeah it is glass. Um, it seems like there's an opportunity to kind of. I get Donna's point is that the, the having that one recess gives some. Well, I don't know what it is, but like interest to the side. Now you're making it all flat. And so like even if you recess the doors a foot, just something to kind of provide a... Is it that the uh, that curving in is the problem that you're missing now? Because it's that straight way in? I, no, feel, no, like no, I feel like you know, I, what I you want to say is... I understand what Mr. Contour is saying is that it's all recessed to the same level of five feet. Yeah. yeah, so like that. you, you're almost saying like have a storefront, bring the door in, and then come back out. The only thing to my my client's point is if we don't know what the tenants are, and right. you and you, you build you it like a typology where where you're showing your double swing mm -hmm. you could right. set back at each door, yeah, so that there's a kind of vet even if it's just a couple feet, which is pretty common. Like mm -hmm. It's just like a two or three foot recess at the door. Yep. So there's a vestibule that belongs to each tent. Yes. Does that make sense? I Yes, it makes, it makes sense. But we but don't we, know how we're going to bring up the space. That's, that's the I issue that we have. But yeah. you can commit to creating a vestibule mm -hmm. at entrances when you decide to bring I know what you're saying. Yes. Whether they're double doors or single doors. Mm -hmm. Right. Whether there's Just something that pushes the door or, yeah. out of the plane. Yep. But we would have that as a guide, but once you develop the tenants, then that door might, the location of that, how that happens Correct. along that wall yes. might vary than what I'm showing right here. Yeah, no, we understand uh, that. Okay. It may I mean, not I'd be love, the same. I'd love to get vertical alignment with the windows above. We can. That may not work out yeah. with mm -hmm. your tenant space. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it just gives a little bit of something. And then... Let's talk about a little bit of what we're doing on top of the first floor. Um, I think that we've run out of time. Out of time. So... Um, okay. Sorry? Yeah, we're going to continue to another day, but I'd like to um, ensure that you're, you have 
renderings that we can actually see what this is going to look like? I have I have them here. Okay, then I don't, I don't, another day. I guess I won't reveal them tonight. We have other tonight. days. <laughs> uh, I believe that the next day that we have is still the same day that we had last time, which was November 7th is our next day. So we would move to, I need a motion to carry this application to November 7th without further notice. Subject to Mr. Garris, the Okay, can I get a motion for that? So moved. I'll second it. All in favor? Yes. Aye. 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 Thank you. Okay. No, November 7th, 7 p.m. Thank you. Okay, I believe that there was something that uh, right. Eric would like to just speak for just one moment. Uh, uh, not on no, this. Not on this. You can, uh, so uh, the Asbury Park Arts Council and City of Asbury Park has undertaken an effort to create a comprehensive arts and culture master plan for the city. And there will be some opportunities for public meetings, filling out surveys. I, if I didn't give you a card when you came, shoved a card in your hand when, when you came in, uh, use the QR code on the back to take a survey and um, check the Asbury Park Arts Council website to find about opportunities for our public participation and input. That's it. Okay. Thank Can you. I get a motion to adjourn? So moved. Thank you for a second. second. Thank you for remembering. Well, Thank you. Aye. Yeah, Thank you. Who seconded? Sorry. I'll second. You'll sure. second. Second. <laughs> what the heck? I'll third. Okay. <laughs> uh.